Right, okay. Well, after that, I'm Taku. This is Bay Class. We're going live now. We've got these oh. people. Yeah. So, just to get off the bat, we're going to talk about what are we playing at the moment. So, Yoji, you've been streaming at least out of all of us. What have you been doing this week? Uh, I play. I tried to play Fireball. I used it like twice. And I was like, um, okay, Hillock's dead. I'm going to play Flame Blast instead. So, I just leveled with <laughs> like the usual stuff into Flame Blast. And I'm playing Flame Blast because. It's Flame Blast. It just feels good to use. It kills stuff in like two hits and it's pretty cool. But I decided to uh, make a bit of a weird build. I'm using a staff because I want to try the new staff nodes because they changed like the two staff wheels a little bit. And now I'm using cr Crit Staff Elementalist Flame Blaster. And at some point, I might be doing the whole self ignite stuff with Eye of Innocence and Mother of Innocence, which is like a new staff that was added that adds. Crap tons of flat fire damage to spells, which is kind of nice with Flame Blast because if you charge it up a bit, it gets solid uh, damage effectiveness. And it's actually still worse than a plus three staff, but I don't want to hear, hear about that. It's, <laughs> I want to do the self ignite <laughs> thing. And it gives you like some cool bonuses if you ignite. It has a lot of block chance, which is kind of cool. Um, and yeah, that's basically the plan. Maybe I will get a legacy roomies at some point. That would be pretty cool with the staff. And yeah, the Eye of Innocence is, is a pretty cool amulet, I, I think. I wanted to use it, but there wasn't really a reason to use it before, because there was nothing that synergized with it. So Leg going, like, Legacy Roomies is pretty cool with any build. It's like, hey, max block out of nowhere. Yep. No problem. <laughs> but like, staves have a bit of a limit on how much block you can easily get. I got the whole wheel that's like 12% block, and that's all on the tree, that there's on the tree. Well, yeah, I don't want to use need... my jewel stats for that. You get like 18% <laughs> like like on the base, so you're already at like 30% with just the tree in the base now. That's pretty good. Yep, and then the staff can have like, what is it? 16, apparently. So that's, yeah, 46. That's pretty good for staff. Pretty good. And normal roomies would be like 66, and legacy would be max as any build. <laughs> Yeah. How are you finding the uh, new staff nodes make it feel worth going staff? Because that's always been a problem, whereas a spellcaster never really felt sacrificing like a wand and a shield or something like that, or a scepter and a shield over go to go a staff. Uh, yeah, I did, did like all the math and stuff. It's absolutely not worth it at all whatsoever. Um, <laughs> I, if you use the crit on, on the shield if you go with unique staff, so that's mm. never worth it. I can I now I'm using a staff with like plus one to fire gems and some crit and some spell damage. That is actually pretty pretty solid. So if you get actually get like plus three staff, I get an empower. You get all that stuff. It kind of comes almost close, but you still don't have a movement skill other than leap slam when you have slow attack speed. So it's still kind of shit. Ugh. And so yeah, my problem is that. It's, it's, I don't think it's ever actually worth it. But I want to use the what's called hot footed, the jewel that gives you movement speed when you are ignited. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's such a waste. It's like, I've already <laughs> given myself mean? enough. Now let's lose it's, a jewel socket. It's, it's, hello, it's 15% movement speed. I'm basically gaining jewel sockets <laughs> by going flame blast instead of fireball, so I don't have to use rolling flame. So I'm, uh, I kind of justify it that way. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it's the, the struggles of making hipster builds. You have to like kind of justify making some optimal choices on all gear slots. <laughs> and descendancy as well, because I could have gone probably gone Inquisitor with crit and do more damage, but I'm an elementalist because reasons. I don't know. It's it's a weird build, but it, it kind of almost makes sense. Oh god. You wanted to be hipster, so you didn't play Inquisitor. Instead you're playing Elementalist. The but you're still playing Flame choice. Blast, so <laughs> yeah, I mean Play fireball, but I kind of failed on the fireball part, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit weird. One thing that I, I kind of regret though is I usually put out before the league, I put out a video about like what build I'm playing, and now these items that are normally not worth nothing are actually worth something, which is annoying because I don't have the time to play and make the currency, so now I screwed myself over. Damn those streamers making items expensive, including myself. I did the exact <laughs> same thing. I was planning on league starting with Burning Arrow, and I thought, oh, no one plays fucking Burning Arrow. And then I made that one video, which went really big on Reddit. And then Maffle made laser burning arrow videos, and now I can't play that build, and it's like brilliant. So oh, nice. screw that. It's yeah. Fucking Maffle. Yeah, yeah it's all that, man. Uh, no, I managed to screw myself over really bad with the league start because I thought, okay, burning arrow is dead. I'll play a Voltaxic build because Voltaxic costs like an Alk, and I was really hyped to go. And then an hour before the league came out, they released the new threshold jewels, and ended up playing a really bad ice shot build. So I managed to self scamaz myself at the last moment by playing something interesting. I kind of did that with Frostbolt too, actually, as my first character. The Frostbolt Threshold Jewel came out there before, and I was like, yeah, all right, I'll give it a go. Yeah. Yep. And it was it was okay. <laughs> In it capitals. Actually, 
It didn't look half as, half as bad. I, I, I look at your stream at some point. The projectile speed does make a huge difference. I didn't expect it to. Oh, be yeah, it feels it feels really nice. Like fr frostbolt with that actually feels really nice. And clear speed was was pretty decent, but it, you just could not get single target, even though you weren't using LMP or GMP. So uh, it yeah. was. I, I went flame blast on rhyme gay. It was just like a pseudo five link. <laughs> Flame blast and, uh, again. It always gets you at some point. And that was that was like the greatest single thing. This explains yeah. the accidental rip for sure. Yeah, that, your build looked really good <laughs> until <laughs> that reflect pack. Uh, yeah. Until the accidental <laughs> reflect pack. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yes. know where. <laughs> so mm, yeah, it's very unexpected. <laughs> I wish I could claim that was on purpose. <laughs> that build was so much fun, man. I was having so much fun, dude. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah. Did you try Vortex for single target? Because there's like this whole interaction, right? Where you can. I, I did, and it just it didn't feel good, man. It didn't it didn't feel good. Yeah, without like getting area damage scaling and area scaling and everything, like even a single target, I don't know. I didn't like it much at all. all right. Really the, MTX, it. the MTXs are so cool. I want to use the skill so badly, but whenever I tried, it didn't feel good. I was hoping you could make it work for me. It's like Essence Drain. It's the same thing. It just feels kind of... Uh, especially now when they nerfed the AoE. I don't know. Yeah. Essence Drain felt like really good for me before. But after you get a couple like good big chains... I don't know. It just feels so sluggish and odd. And this felt the same way. Frostbolt with Vortex. Mm. Mm. Not my yeah. thing. Yeah, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually... rip on stream, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually... I'm actually not using uh, Egg AoE anymore on Flame Blast because it just doesn't do anything, apparently. I was, like, really surprised how little AoE I lose yeah. for not using Egg AoE, which is weird. It just feels a bit weird. I also sometimes check while mapping if I accidentally forget to put, forgot to put Conk Effect out and in again because I'm like, the AoE is too small, but no, it's actually the, the normal AoE without Conk. I'm like, damn it. I'm, I'm using Conk Effect on Caustic Arrow and it feels great. I mean, now I'm not, but I was for the majority of it. Like, not using increased AoE and using Conk Effect instead. Feels really fun. Like, uh, I don't know. Conk Effect feels really nice. And increases to AoE feel really un... Uh, how would I describe this? What's, the, what's that word? Un Horrible. <laughs> yes, okay, yeah. we can go with horrible, sure. <laughs> yeah, it, unrewarding, there you go. Unrewarding, unrewarding. Yeah, it, it doesn't feel rewarding yeah. at all. Yeah. It's just too bad. Yeah, they actually nerfed bad. Conk Effect this patch as well, which is kind of funny. They made it, the penalty harsher and the damage lower. Didn't they buff it? I thought it was the other way around. Well, I thought they made the damage lower. Pretty sure they buffed it. Maybe they buffed the penalty, but they definitely lowered the damage, right? They increased the damage, I think. And... What? No, no way. I'm pretty sure they buffed Gunk Effect. <laughs> yeah, but at the well, end they... of the day, you log out and you're 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 like, I'm still playing Caustic Arrow though. <laughs> Excuse me? What what? <laughs> Caustic Arrow is amazing. Caustic Arrow is the best thing ever. People people think Essence Drain is where it's at. Caustic Arrow is where it's at. No, like seriously, I don't know, it's a lot of fun. I haven't played Caustic Arrow since it was Poison Arrow and it was on a trap. And now it feels really freaking good. <laughs> Like, really, really good. And I, I'm not looking at chat right now, okay? <laughs> Chat's good. It's going crazy. I mean, let me, let me just say this. I, went in, I, 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 watched, I watched the stream for a little bit today, and um, I made a comment about Caustic Arrow, and you said, you know, this is like one-shotting everything. And I watched you go into a Mesa map, and you went into, like, the boss room, and then, like, my stream froze. I don't know if you were, like, having internet issues. I refreshed the browser, and you were still trying to kill the boss. That, that was before. Listen, this is... <laughs> okay, there's a difference between Caustic Arrow and Soul Cell Found Caustic Arrow. Now, when I have an offhand Delirium Bow for single target, I'm basically playing Essence Drain with more damage. Like, that's literally what it is for single target. And that's pretty good. Uh, and that's without a plus one or anything. I just recently found an Empower. Uh, there's a lot of things to be improved, but I thought Profane Bloom is going to feel really bad on the cultist, but it still feels okay, but I wish they would change it, because Blasphemy got hit by such a huge nerf uh, to AoE, which I think is totally justified, but it hit things like Profane Bloom. So I think if they make Profane Bloom like uh, recently cursed mobs can explode, now that would be a lot of fun. But uh, as it is now, it still feels... it still feels really rewarding. I mean, as rewarding as Abyssal Cry gets, and Abyssal Cry feels... 
pretty fun. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> so what have you been playing, huh? Cute dog? Yeah, okay. Okay. Let's well, go. Uh... <laughs> Let, let's go. Is it, is it Valspark? <laughs> is it Valspark? <laughs> yo, like, yo, come on. Let me let me tell them about my interesting build. I right, actually so didn't watch little, the stream yet. It's <laughs> it's a little Inquisitor Valspark. All right, but it's <gasps> but it's but it's special because we're gonna have some variations this league. Have you we changed might, your you know, MTX? Is that what's special? Uh... I've changed the MTX a little bit, but also later <laughs> on in the league, we might be able to go magic magic find Valspark this league. With uh, item quantity, maybe, maybe biscos, maybe some other stuff. Whoa. I don't know. Haven't tried it yet, but I'm thinking about it, guys. And so, <laughs> I, feel right like I feel like you'll be thinking about it for the next three months. So I don't know. Yeah. I, have, I have a feeling. So far, it's been it's the same build I've been playing for the last two weeks, but uh, <clears throat> it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, I, I'm having a good time. I like to clear pretty fast, and I just got to, uh, I haven't been able to play as much as I wanted, so I just got to shape dunes, shape strands. And hopefully, you know, I'm able to make enough money for uh, like future builds and stuff. Also, the league is um, <clears throat> solo soft court, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. which is just soft court. Yeah, you've got it. That's OP. I click on the ladder <laughs> thing, and if you click the ladder thing on the website, it automatically redirects there. Freaking GGG favors soft court, man. It's yep. not cool. <laughs> Like like most people, yep, the best league. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> like like the majority. Yep. I was so surprised when I uh, when I had my inevitable rip at ninety three on my first character when I was re rolling. I was like, eh. everybody was like, oh, put put your character name in the ladder tracker so we can see the progression. I was like, eh, there's no way I'm gonna be on the ladder on the first day or anything like that. Like, let's not do it. I was like level six. I was in the top 15,000. 15, <laughs> I was like, holy shit. I thought more people are gonna play this, but uh, I guess not. Hard Crystal Cell Phone ain't that popular. A lot of people play it, attention. but not nearly as much as I thought it will. Uh, so if you're yeah. on Reddit, it's all that's it's all like solo self found. Um, yeah. So it gets like the most attention in uh, community. I mean, what you need to remember is the people playing solo Southbound want you to fucking know that they're playing solo Southbound. So <laughs> they're posting that yeah. on Reddit. But, it's, uh... it's like being vegan. <laughs> yeah. It's like being vegan in the, the POE. <laughs> yeah. I find, I'm, I'm self on guys. I find found all this game myself yeah. alone by only me. I did not trade <laughs> in unethical ways with anyone else. <laughs> self found. I also like how the top comment on most of my videos now is like, how viable is this build for solo cell found? It's like, <laughs> sure, okay, really? okay. Yeah, like they're looking at my, um, like on the burning arrow guide, I'm recommending like four or five different uniques. Like, so how realistic is it to get a soft blood in solo cell found? I'm like, probably not that realistic. Maybe play earthquake. Oh, that's boring. I want to play like some cool hipster build. And I was like, I don't think you understand how solo cell found works. Like you, you pick one or the other. But I think the real tragedy with uh, Solo Selfa now is when you go to like uh, change between the leagues, there's drop drop down list just like dumps across your entire screen now. It's horrible. Uh, what do you mean? However, have you not actually gone into the login screen and like you go to select your characters by which league you want? When yeah, you click like, it, there's yeah. now like six options. It's terrible. Six. Oh, okay. It's That's six. They've, they've, it's they've a triple percent increase in the options. It's terrible, man. Um, That's some couple... serious option inflation right there. Mm -hmm. Definitely a concerning issue for me. Yep, outrageous, outrageous. We have to stop this. We have to put an end to this. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you remind me like of the viable things today. I, like my entire first character, I was trying to switch to Explosive Arrow, but I couldn't find a Devoto's Devotion or Chancet or anything. And today I finally found one. <laughs> I've been there day. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> it's never again. Oh, no. <laughs> that's something I really like about Cell Found. I played Cell Found last league, and I uh, wanted to make a Righteous Fire character, but then I kind of didn't really work out. But at some point, when I found the Rise of the Phoenix, I went back to the character. It just felt so good to actually put that together. And then I died almost all immediately after. But that's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. He did a few maps, and it was a fun character for, for a few months. Yeah, I tried vendoring the, the Votos. I tried to play that off cool too. Sure. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> it's totally so, fine. So what topic are you going to get? Builds? Oh yeah. Um, so I played 
I played uh, the Baron, which is the new unique helmets, uh, strength stacking zombie themed helmets. Uh, and I went full zombies. So I'm like, I have to for the first go with this, go full zombies. I, def- I definitely think there's other ways you can build with it and just use the strength bonus for other minions. But uh, I did go zombies with support from SRS because you don't want to clear as just zombies. As many people, uh, despite how many people ask, you, you can't just clear as zombies. But I'll tell you what, they get some pretty kick-ass damage, man. They get super tanky. Once you get that mantra ghouls growing, they just they just okay. never die. And uh, God, the infernal blows are not so satisfying as well. But um, that whole combo feels pretty good now, and uh, you end up building a fairly tanky character because of you know stacking a thousand strength. And uh, I just got that leech kicking in before I um, have basically an AFK death health stream like an idiot. Um, I got that two percent leech kicking in, so once you get to a thousand strength, your, your zombies leech two percent of their damage to you as life, which is a shit ton of leech, man. They it's basically so leech cap broken. You. It's so unreal <laughs> to me. I can't believe they implemented that. It's, it's crazy, so crazy, man. <laughs> you can face tank like anything in the game with that. Just get 15k yes, face tank shaper, whatever. You can AFK anything. Oh, I mean, I guess you can't, but <laughs> you can. <laughs> Usually you can. But at least, at least you try it though. <laughs> the problem with that rise is that the zombies don't actually attack anything unless you tell them to most of the time, which is exactly how I died. I was basically like not even, not really looking at the screen. I just walked into a pack, and because I didn't cast an SRS, I'll tell them to attack the pack. I just kind of walked in there and died and my zombies watched. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking At least assholes. they killed everything after, right? <laughs> uh, I, guess, I guess they probably did. I didn't I didn't stick around to watch. I was just, I was face <laughs> in hands, man, on the desk. Like, oh my god, I just died off stream without recording it. Like, which is the most devastating thing you can do as a streamer. <laughs> Do you think they'll no, ever, so like, good. go back and buff the minion AI? Because I've been wanting to play a summoner for a really long time, but I know that the AI would just get in the way, so I just haven't played one. Honestly, most, like, I think the problem is overstated, because if you, as long as you're casting SRS towards packs, they are, they are fine. Like, they go out and they rush out and attack shit, and they'll be rushing ahead of you. It's just if you're running along without casting anything. So you just have to be very vigilant and active and pay attention a lot. Which is what you need to do on a summer anyway, because you always need to be aware of where your minions are, where you are, where there's AOE stacking happening around you and stuff like that. So you got to be super aware and pretty active about it. But it's not really that much of a problem. But for so I think some people want to play a summoner where they basically have their zombies or whatever and their specters, and they just walk around and they do the killing. Some people like to play that like classic pet build feel. Yeah. And for them, maybe like an aggro jewel would be nice that give them aggressive AI, kind of like what they did with the golems. It would uh. Golems are would sick. be good, I think. Yep. The gold golem golem answer is so pretty good. bloody good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's actually a really good pet build. If someone wants like the pet build playstyle, I would say golems are a re- really good way to go because they just like like fire golems just have this barrage of projectiles destroying everything by on their own, which is pretty cool. You can just walk around with that build and that will kill yeah. everything for you. Are those so gems still expensive? Because I know last year they were really yes. expensive. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're super. They're, they're actually turned out to be super rare, which wasn't I wasn't expecting when I did the testing at GG Office and made that first build guide video and fucked <laughs> everyone over when they tried to play it. Are we allowed to swear on this podcast, by the way? Like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. yeah okay, sorry. <laughs> 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 I dropped the like four fucks like, already. <laughs> I, I can tell you, I can tell you not to swear, <laughs> but then myself would be saying cut and fuck yeah. every two seconds, so just go with it. <laughs> Ah, good, good. Just, just, yeah. just checking. That's fine. That's but fine. Uh, I was, I was super happy with the zombie build. It's really fun to play. Like as I said, you got to be, you got to be active with it, and you've got to play SRS or something else with it. You can't just rely on zombies. And uh, it's, it's, they definitely don't clear as fast as Spectre summoners, like SRS Spectres, because you just can't compare the zombies running up to a pack, even when you're stacking a bunch of minion speed, to an SRS Spectre group just. Chucking fireballs all over the screen, <laughs> like just that's blanking a, that's the it. Thing. Did you try the the queen's escape or whatever for the zombies? The hundred the, percent no, like speed. Yeah. No, I didn't try that. I went Victoria's charity, which gives them frenzy charges, which makes them super freaking fast. So I kind of feel like that's better, especially because you kind of need Montreal's grass to keep them alive. Even stacking a thousand strength, they still end up around ten k life ish, yeah. which what? um. No, they, they, still, have be, they, they have to be die. higher. I, I don't get too many. Wait, they get like packs. five thousand for oh, right. Montreal Ghouls alone, no? Yeah. Yeah, you know. get five thousand. I had they, a get to, they get a twenty k with Montreal Ghouls because of the scaling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had a friend who was playing that build, and he said his zombies had like twenty five k health or something. 
Oh. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you got a bit of same same life, you could easily so. get to that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess if you're using only zombies, you're not doing like minion life gem or anything like that. So, because normally yeah. zombies have the tanky setup, and then they can easily get like 25k life. Or so. Yeah. Yeah. This, without minion life, obviously, about 10k without Montreals, but it goes to like 20k once you get it on. So, um, and then they get super tanky. But um, mm. yeah, it, yeah, it's minion not as fast as Golemancer or all that. But uh, I didn't try minion stability. Um, I was tinkering with the idea of going for. And I might have eventually tested this, the on death one, because the problem with me and stability and zombies is they just, once you get Munch of Ghouls going, they just never die, right? Like, they're never going to get down to 30 percent unless you're using, like, an Umbilicus Saw, which is where yeah, you know, the last stuff kill them, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the other one, you can just resummon zombies and they'll die. But I tried that with Golemancer, and the Golems had really high health as well, and I didn't really feel like it added too much to the build. It was kind of nice, but... So I didn't really feel like bothering with that on the zombies. I'll tell you what I was going to do, though, is like if I had stayed alive and gotten the cash together, I would have eventually swapped out Victarios for 7 in sleep just for bossing and gone with Victarios for AoE clear. And uh, zombies with their... So once you get the two jewels on and multi-strike, they just only slam. They only do their slam. And um, oh, nice. you could just put Conquer Effect on them and then go poison stacking with that shit. And we, they already do so much <laughs> target damage. All Zombies the double dipping, effect, holy slam, shit. poison stacking with minion damage that also double dips. Oh, baby. Yeah, that sounds, that's juicy single target, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. much single target damage. They would just obliterate guardians and whatnot, I'm sure. Oh. I mean, so, the issue, though, was, with, some of these, uh, with some of these minions, though, like the damage and the life of them, doesn't. it's it's fine, right? But then it was like you'd always be faster than them, even if you crafted the moves beyond the rings, which are really expensive, by the way, for like a, a new player. When they first start the league, it still felt really slow. And I think Convocation had a has a pretty nasty cooldown. Um, I mean, did you run into that though? You just kind of have to when you you just have to force your zombies to run ahead of you, like while while you're actually clearing casting SRS, and that's what limits the build basically because your move speed like makes less of a difference to your clear speed because you have to wait for the zombies. So yeah, it does slow you down a bit as compared to something like specters where you clear as fast as you run because you just yeah they if you run fast enough they teleport behind you and what happens is the specters just kind of leapfrog through the map casting fireball whenever they appear on like they appear in the middle of the pack as you run through the pack and they just fireball them down instantly so yeah you do it's definitely a much slower clear speed still fast though like i wouldn't say it's a slow build though but yeah a lot of fun though definitely worth playing if you like the uh idea of having strong zombies arnold schwarzenegger zombies running around does the, the slam look cool? Has it, does it have a cool animation? They made it a little bit more obvious. And yeah, it looks cool, man. Especially once you get Montregor's Infernal Blow Effect going, where they just oh, run yeah. into a pack and the zombie just goes, and then the pack just goes. <laughs> they get nice. bigger too, right? With the yeah, they get bigger, which looks yeah. pretty good. Yeah, It's cool. good. Because bigger that type of stuff better. is important to me in builds. Like having a cool look and feel. It does look good. Yeah. Right? So what are you moving on to now that that's dead then? Um, now I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm making this cool new build that you guys might, might not have heard of yet, but it's called Vastmark. Uh, yes! <laughs> yes! I think we have a Vastmark oh, fanboy man. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be able to afford my, my upgrades. Uh, I'll be uh, back in a couple minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, what you were talking about, Chicken, is basically what I'm doing. I'm just going to make a Vastmark quantity farmer, just Ooh. so I can get shit tons of currency to buy relicaries. I basically want to do, um... Opening ten relicaries, you, you won't believe what's in number seven <laughs> videos. I'm just gonna churn those out like like a son of a bitch, man. They're just gonna I'm just gonna chain those videos out. Dude, don't so stop on my tab. I've been uploading one of those vids like every day. It's brilliant. I've got a system <laughs> where if one of my viewers gets a key, I sit in on them opening it. Uh, just so I can record the footage and then just throw that straight onto YouTube. It's beautiful. Nice. The it's like easiest the content of... ever. It's so leeching, good. Leeching relicary openings. It's Damn, brilliant, it's so man. ethical. I mean, I... <laughs> I just clickbaited all of Reddit with putting up, like, I, I found a Calms. Oh, I that saw that. You that got me. Amazing. That was good. The best thing is, though, <laughs> is you, you had so many people who didn't actually watch your video that saw the title. Because I yeah. had people thinking you'd actually gotten one. Um, mm-hmm. That was terrible. <laughs> That's me. I, I saw the title and I was like, this motherfucker. And I, did, so I didn't even watch it. And I streamed for, like, two hours and people kept asking how I liked the OG's Calms. I'm like... I didn't like it, man. And then I actually watched the video. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm gonna <laughs> nice. That's even better, though. Yeah. Oh, That's nice. pretty well, good. Yeah, the way I saw it is, um, you know how multiple uniques can drop out of a relicary? 
So I, I see him open. I see a ring come out. I'm like, okay. I'm like waiting for the next <laughs> items to pop out. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, that's like the combs is the ring. Yeah. So I like watched it <laughs> till the very end before I like figured it out. <laughs> I saw someone do that and get like two two calms and then those like rarity boots <laughs> from their three <laughs> uniques. <laughs> That's uh, that's tough. Two two count signs, just to be clear. I'm that's not debating so, anyone. That's so <laughs> tilting on solo self. You have no idea. You keep getting these Reddit posts where people are like, fucking posting their screenshots of what they found so far. I found two relics. One uh, was a Harry's ire, and the second one was uh, the dual wield thingy. That's not dual wielding. Yeah, that Project PT died thing? with. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, that one. And then you see these screenshots of people posting, I found like 10 keys, and every single one of those goddamn posts has a fucking silver branch in there. And I need a silver Dude, branch for my plus three though, man. And I can't God, yeah. get it. Because you can upgrade that into plus three now. It's crazy. Oh, it actually works nice. I was wondering that when I yeah. saw it. That's cool. Yeah, it works. It's sick. It's got like 10 mana gained on kill too. It's crazy, man. Totally ridiculous. That's nice. Really good. I've not found a single reliquary key yet, despite having put it some serious time into the league so far. Extremely like, how, how have you guys gone with that? So you've gotten two, right? What about the other guys? Uh, I've only found, found one, and I got a soul strike from it, so I was pretty happy. And it was right Excuse after... Excuse me? Yeah, and That's it was good. It, it was right <laughs> after lifting it made a video on <laughs> so it, salty. so the prices went straight up. It was God, beautiful. Dude, what the fuck? I have a, I have found a blight well. I need a legacy soul strike so much. That's such an OP combo. Yeah. It's like 400% uh, energy shield recharge rate, and then you use a soul strike. And you occultist. Just, you have you and occult. You, you have permanent vault discipline, like at all times. It's in. It's totally insane. But I can't find either. So well, I can't believe you actually got it. That's so tilting. That's crazy. And you can actually, watch that reaction live about... on my YouTube. Uh... <laughs> Excuse how me. How much? How about general? How many the keys did you find? Because you are kind of playing fast um, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I found two keys, and obviously this is very anecdotal, but I found seven pure exalt drops and only two relic keys. And in the relic keys, I got a moon sorrow wand, and then I got wonder trap boots. I was so oh, mad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I remember, every time. I thinking uh, moon sorrow worth something, so you maybe you should like cut some kind of deal here. <laughs> yeah, that was like that was like three years ago. I don't think that's gonna cut it this time. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make a like a Joffrey's arc build again and drop or something. What? No. <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> Moon sorry, Joffrey's arc. That was so yeah. stupid though. Let me if I can rant for a second. Mate, the fact that Moon Price Moon Sorrows got to like half an X or something back mm -hmm. then. So stupid because no the point of using Moon Sorrow was like it was it was cheaper than getting a rare wand with equivalent stats, but <laughs> And then that league, there was like rare ones for 1C that had like twice as much damage as Moon so It made no sense. Oh, Dude, God. You, that, that reminds me of the worst time in my life when the whole uh, RF incinerator thing happened. And like people kept not believing that I can do it on a budget setup. So I did a video of it being budget with a four link and using a, uh, not a silver branch. I keep thinking silver branch. What's the, what's the <laughs> basic one? Life's break. A yeah. life spray, right? And then people fucking kept coming to me and they're like, why do you use a life spray? And the life spray price went up by like a couple chaos and everything. It was like the worst <laughs> thing ever. I was such a huge fail. <laughs> I couldn't take it, man. Oh, damn it. So you only <laughs> also only found two keys because then I got pretty lucky because I didn't, I like, played less than 20 hours this league so far. And I got one key in Cruel Ledge, actually. And then wow. I was so hyped to open the, 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 key, thing, the key thing. Because it took me like forever to get them to, to maps after I found the key. So I was sitting there with the key in my inventory. It was like, I'm going to turn this in. It's going to be epic. And I got a cow sign. But yeah. That's, that's why. Thing, now. <laughs> what was the other one? I only got one. Oh, I thought you said you had two. Never mind. Yeah, I only got one. A two would be ridiculous in 20 hours. Like two keys. Yeah. I probably would have gotten another cow sign though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've the zero in 100 hours. Yeah. That's pretty bloody unlucky. Yep. Yeah, especially yeah. given what like kind of Chris and that was saying to me about what that kind of expected rate of it was that you know like your standard player getting to and playing endgame for a little while is expected to get one right. The fact that I've oh, played wow. two characters way beyond that and I'm on my third character now and I still haven't got one that's oh, that's crazy unlucky it sounds like, especially compared to what you guys have gotten so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it seems so like... bad though. 
seems like what the other scouts is probably mm-hmm. what you should be getting then. To get like two in that during that time, roughly. Mm-hmm. Like one per probably building every 85 up. 90 character. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna get like five of one mob or something. <laughs> You're gonna get a silver branch, I'm telling you. God damn it. <laughs> 100%. I won't be as excited as you would be if you get that. I hope you get your silver branch runners. I want to see that video. And then I can see the true true cause to Garrett Dream, apparently. I'll do I'll, I'll do what you guys do, but like FIFA style, you know? I'll like take somebody else's video of dropping a silver branch at my face and freak out when it drops. <laughs> Post it on Reddit, get all the views, man. It's oh, yeah. Crazy. I'm going to do that with everything. I'm, su- I'm surprised Tarki's not doing that, to be honest. Mm. He should be. I know. So are you gonna stick me. with um, solo stuff and all guys, or I don't know. I I thought that the because I had a ninety three character that I died on. I'm like ninety four and a half now. I thought that after I'm gonna die on the first character, hundred percent, I'm switching to the normal league. But I just uh, I don't know. I I had no desire to. It was so weird because usually uh, that's what I did last league, right? I did solo self fun, and then when I died, I just started playing normally. But here, I just, when I thought about trading and everything, it just wasn't in me. And uh, yeah, I did the Caustic Arrow thing, and despite not having any any currency, it really still worked out. I mean, I died like third on the ladder, and now I'm somewhere in the top 10 again with Caustic Arrow. So it's still, you can still do pretty freaking well on Solo Cell Phone, even if you don't have anything. And now... When people ask me, I really don't know. I keep thinking that on my next character, I'm going to play on, on the normal league. But then when I really think about it, you know, coming back from a 10-minute AFK and not seeing any whispers about trading feels pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I think that's one of the kind of attractive things of Solar Cell though, is building up your economy over time. And when you die, you have some other items and builds kind of ready to go based on things yeah. you found. Like, you, you don't get that so much with trading because you just liquidate into currency and then fund your current yep. build. But yeah. you find, like, some sick item, and you're like, oh, I'll use that on my next build if I die. Like, that's kind of cool. That's the, that's the odd thing because in the past for Solo Cell Found, you know, I only played very ethically in the past. If I had something in my stash, I would get rid of it, even though I found it Solo Cell Found before. But it just didn't feel right. But here, <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a whole different environment now. I don't know. It just feels uh, good, and I don't have any need for trading. Granted, I have been quite lucky. I mean, I th- six linked three items so far, and farmed the hedge maze for the porcupine <laughs> card. So that, I have that's a little bit lucky. A little bit lucky. It's a, <laughs> no. I also found my first ever shafts. I've never found wow. the shafts Ooh, before ever. Crazy. Now I found it. Uh, it's been it's you know it's been good. Any anything that I, <laughs> anything that I that I volarbed has went plus one, <laughs> so my <laughs> my poison arrow went plus one, my caustic arrow and my uh, essence drain went plus one. But that also really messed me up on the atlas shaping, because any ma- like if you want to shape, uh, if you want to get a shaper orb from the higher maps, you have to mm. do it uh, like rare, and then you have to volarb yeah. it. And it goes plus one. Every every single goddamn time it went plus one. And the worst part was that I was like, not do because you have limited sextants, I wouldn't do the map prior to that map or the map prior to that. So that meant that I had to gather all the other maps, volerb them for plus one, or get enough to vendor them for that, and then get those to vendor for another. And then get those to vendor for another. So that's like 30 Jesus. maps. Mm. And then once I would get there, it would go plus one. So Just trade for like, a map rise. Jeez. It, took, it took me like five days to get a single goddamn yeah. freaking shaper orb. It was insane. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Atlas progression in, in Cell Found is, is really d- different. It, it takes way longer. You do actually do the like three to one up trade, trading up stuff. And yeah, it's, it's actually kind of interesting but it's also pretty slow like if you don't have time to play as much it's it's really slow for sure i played so much dude like i can't imagine a, you know a casual player just yeah being okay with this it's it it just takes so long like if you if you just do whatever with your atlas mm-hmm. it doesn't take that long uh even last week uh when i did the solo cell phone thing before solo cell phone was implemented uh it felt okay because I was just running every map and I was just going through the atlas and I I had something like 
90 bonus by the time I was uh, 93. And now when I'm trying to get the right maps, right, I'm trying to do the whole shaper or thing. It Yeah, it's just so much longer. It's so much longer. Money. Yeah, it's it's still really fun. If you have the time to do it, it's so much fun. Really. It's me for new players, though. Um, when I first started doing Atlas, I was trying to do it myself in 2.0. And if you get to Pier, I think it is, there's no connectors that go up if you go on that side. <laughs> yep. So you just keep doing 8s, 7s, 8s, 6s, 7s, 8s over and over. And for so so bad, you see a new player, they probably get stuck there. Like, and because the Atlas is not very well explained, right? They could like get on that on the right side of the Atlas and just get stuck there forever, not knowing why they're not dropping anything but Pier as their highest map. <laughs> yep. And Pier is such an annoying boss as well. So you're like, yeah. stuck with stuck with doing that boss over and over again, hoping for a map drop and never. <laughs> That that's how people <laughs> quit the game, man. That's how people leave. It's my life now. <laughs> uh, forever peer. That's how I tried to get my excavation. After it went plus one into a necropolis, <laughs> I tried to run necropolis because it was adjacent to the excavation. Yeah. So I ran like, I don't know how many, man. It was like many days before I got the minus one. It was insane. And then the funny part was that immediately from that excavation, I got a minus one of the excavation, which is a temp. It's a malformation. <laughs> so I ran like 40 necros before I got it. And then on the other one, I got it instantly. <laughs> Having to so run That's the fun of it. Necros. That's really the fun of it. <laughs> it sounds Just ridiculous. Kill me. Just it kill me. It sounds now. really horrible. <laughs> and the sad thing is. It's not that bad. I, I mean, it not... sounds pretty terrible. And like the Listen, really sad if... thing is, is it's not even going to get changed like anytime soon because they're, all their focus will be on 3.0 stuff. So it probably will be like two, maybe three big patches until it gets fixed. No, no, no. That, you don't have to do that at all. Like you don't have to do what I did. What I did was kind of, it was really greedy and I got really punished for it. That's pretty much it. But it, it, it feels good. I mean, it feels especially good when you play video games for a living, because then you can do it as much for as long as you want to. <laughs> but if you don't, then yep. yeah, just uh, just avoid that and don't do that. Just don't do what I did. Right. So, like, how much of the whole solo self found thing do you think is being aided by the league? Like, how well is the league actually suited to solo self found? Because I was worried that it, this would be a terrible league to play solo self found because the economy would be interesting. That was my whole thought process. Mm, I think I think solo self found is like the better way to do it. Honestly, I don't know if, in my perspective, uh, I'm I'm like more of a solo player. So <laughs> I'm more of a solo player, and I feel like the league stones are just so goddamn rewarding when you're playing in a group. It's almost pointless to not play in a group if you can always have like somebody with a with a bloodlines league stone. Mm -hmm. So that would that would be like a big problem for me that I would always feel like uh, I'm overpaying and uh, I'm spending too much time doing something when I could just be playing with somebody else who's got the leaks down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think I think it does aid it a bit because like Piranhas is back in the game and back when Piranhas was first introduced it did help. It helps Solo South Hound a lot because you just get a lot of uniques offered, especially now that they added, like, that you can actually find Kadiro, which before it was kind of like useless because you could only get it like as a role, I think. And yeah. now it's implicit, which it I was think crazy. is pretty good. I didn't and, even get it once. Like, yeah, I had a 93 and a 94, and I still didn't get it once. If they didn't yeah. change it, I still wouldn't have seen Kadiro even yeah. once. It was nuts. It, it, it really was. And I mean, the best thing was uh, wide onslaught stones. They just make the game harder, no benefit. That was super fun. Um, yeah. Now it's <laughs> nice. That Great was like changes. The best, uh, that yeah. was the most ethical way to play, actually, to always have a wide onslaught stone in because it just makes the game <laughs> more, eth more ethical. <laughs> <laughs> I, tried, I tried, I died so many times while leveling to that. It was hilarious. But um, yeah, I think a Breach adds a lot of loot. Like you can get, get all the, like you can cherry pick your favorite leagues and the most rewarding leagues if you have the stones. So it def definitely, def definitely does add Soul South on just because you get just more loot yeah. and more choices from yeah. of loot. Like Kadiro offers you choices, which is pretty good. Yeah. Everything's going to be pretty cheap this league. I mean, you remember like back in Prandis, 
shafts and all that stuff went down extremely fast. So Mm -hmm. it'll be nice for people who are coming back to the game. You know, just buy whatever build you want later on. That'll be very enjoyable. I actually thought things would be cheaper than they were. Like, it might just be that they only recently did the Kadiro change, that the prices aren't that low. But going into this league, I thought stuff would be super accessible. But to, mm. to me, at least, it doesn't seem like that's really happened yet. I don't know. Well, it's only one week in. I mean, it yeah. feels like, like with us, when we stream, it feels like the league has been going on for ages, right? Like, I log in, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so far behind. Everyone's, like, just chaining Shaper. And then I look at the the calendar, and it's like, oh, it's only been live for a week. <laughs> so. I'm level 71. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I just did my first tier one maps today. I think that's that's kind of like the working line. <laughs> it's also the influx of players. I think I don't know. Whenever there's like a lot of new players, everything just gets super expensive because people aim for like a specific item because they've heard that you can do something something with it, and that just they don't do the content that provides the item, but they do like you know, Volspark Dried Lake and stuff. So <laughs> I, I think that's true. Like demand kind of uh, outpaces supply as new people are yeah. added to the game. Yeah. Because those people aren't really getting in and dropping a heap of stuff. They're more yeah. trying to buy a heap of stuff with cows, recipe cows and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm. And it doesn't help that there's a couple Australian streamers just like shitting up the game by mentioning items on stream. <laughs> Yeah, horrible. People then keep it... asking me what I'm gonna do with my boss box. What items <laughs> gonna use? Are you gonna use Bisco's collar and something like that? I'm just like, just, just stop asking me, please. <laughs> stop asking me. I haven't bought everything yet. <laughs> yeah, I saw that today on your stream. Somebody asked you, and you're like, yeah, you probably shouldn't shouldn't talk about that anymore. <laughs> Somebody was like, you do realize that they're just asking so they can flip your items. You're like, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I can't not answer questions though, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's the problem. Well, it is like a legit, kind of like a legit. It could, could be a legit question because someone might be playing the build, maybe being ahead of you. It could, it could and always it, be a legit question. And if I'm like, oh, I'm I'm playing a secret build with top secret <laughs> items, and, and that, and then and then like they're all getting excited, and then I'm playing Valspark in a few days. Yeah. So like, it's a secret. Don't worry. It's it's magic. Find Valspark. Yeah. <laughs> different build I different promise. build that has different never build. been done before in the history of poe that's the that's <laughs> the worst thing about twitch chat too you're like this person is asking a legitimate question let me answer him seriously and then you answer them and then as soon as you finish answering they post a kappa it's like yeah. fuck why did i just waste my time on this man <laughs> god damn yeah, it's always it's always hard to tell it's like is this a beginner asking a question or is this yeah. better at trolling me let me take a gamble <laughs> so bad it's always the kappa too at the end yeah yeah you just don't get around it <laughs> It's always yeah, the veteran. Kappa, it's never the I new player. Kappas. I thought that was like sincere face. I thought that was hey, people, hey, people know people were telling the truth. That's... <laughs> <laughs> we got raised. People always saying people always saying nice things to me with that with that sincere gray face at the end. But, okay. I mean, it's, like, it's, it's, like, it's black and white. Like it has to be serious, right? <laughs> yeah. It is, a, it is a nice thing. They're getting currency out of it. It's okay. Uh, some people are uh are pretty shameless about it as well i get people saying in chat and on reddit and that they're like they make 100 percent of their money off buying and flipping oh, items wow. that math or i or someone like does in a build <laughs> yep <laughs> like yeah <laughs> god damn it i, I, I mean like never that, budget I... Build guide, ever. yeah I try not to do that when I flip items because I feel like it's actually kind of unethical not memeing here. It's, it's, I think it's like pretty bad. But sometimes what I would do, I would look at some of the new items and be like, this is undervalued. And then I would buy some of those and to just resell them later. And yeah, obviously it will be like someone like who, like Matthew who would also look at the item like maybe like two weeks later and be like, hey, this is pretty good. I want to play this. And then it looks like I might have flipped those items, but I actually just thought about it myself. <laughs> it's... It's so easy to go over the, to the dark side as a streamer. It'd be yeah. so easy just yeah. to like flip items and turn sick profits. And it's hard to like not accidentally do it sometimes. Because if you sometimes you might like watch the market for a while if you're planning on buying an item for a build mm-hmm. and then you're picking up a few items and maybe you grab a few ro- a few items with like better rolls or something like that. And then, yeah, you're in that point where you're like, well, wait a minute, and am I going to flip this for a profit soon? <laughs> so, like, like yeah, am I like crossing the line here? It's, I don't know. I, I really worry about that. <laughs> Okay. That's like full eat up. Oh I think God. it's I think it's pretty hard to avoid that completely though because I like with the way that I make builds, it'll be a case of I like building around particular items. 
So when we got the new item list, I made like a video of these are the 10 items to kind of watch out for. And I made a point of buying a bunch of them really early on. Because again, I only I mostly just play bow builds. I play like the same build over and over and over again. <laughs> so I bought like backup. So I have like five Cherubiums in my um, stash right now. And then people watch my stream go, why is Taki hoarding this one item? So then everyone watched my stream, they all buy like four or five of them. And now someone like Mathil plays it and it's like, oh, Taki knew from the beginning his whole stream has been RMTing Cherubiums in hardcore. And it's like, well, but, um, it's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's like, I love, um, I love speculating the market and flipping items and stuff like that. Like, I think that's really a fun part of the economy, but if I, and that same issue, like if I even do that, then even if I don't use them in a build and like explicitly promote the item, if people ever just like see the fact that I have bought a bunch of these, then, mm -hmm. then that artificially inflates the price. And then I don't know if I even speculated correctly or if I just, you know, kind of like forced the price up because I had, yeah. because I bought them and showed it off. So yeah, you, you yeah. could basically just buy Stop. a stash up full of random unique, show it on stream <laughs> a few times and resell them. <laughs> Profit. Re rename the tab. Like do perfect, not show on scroll through it. Whoops, yeah. I didn't need to show you guys <laughs> that. <laughs> so, <laughs> it'd be so time, like, easy to do that. <laughs> That's my so secret stash tab of yikes. items I will use in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at that, guys. Nobody clip that. Nobody clip that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like five other ones with the same items just stashed up yeah let's go i actually i actually purposely did the opposite of that before this league went live because again i only play mostly play bow builds and i knew that death's opus was going to get crazy overhyped so i made a secret wind ripper build hoping that people would try and flip wind ripper items rather than stuff i needed for voltaxic so in my skill tree plan i had those like wind ripper question mark question mark question mark stuff that would accidentally hover over every now and again um, just a mess with that one guy who tried to flip off my stream. But um, one thing which I do actually really like is with the new Threshold Jewels, they've all been really accessible. Because that was one thing I was really worried about going into the new patch, that they would be so rare that if, like, Ziggy made, like, an EK or, like, a Frostbolt video, that they would be, like, crazy and expensive. But from what I've seen, they've all been, like, a Chaos each, which is quite nice. Um, if the Threshold Jewels were actually good, that would kind of help, because personally, I feel like you have this awkward balance issue with them where, like, you have something like the Burning Arrow Threshold Jewel where you only need one. And it's like you've got one Threshold Jewel that's like no real investment. Feels amazing. Then you have these other Threshold Jewels where you need like three or four of them. And suddenly the balance between the two of them is just completely thrown out of whack. I don't know. Yeah. They uh, they up the drop rates on uh, on Threshold Jewels as well. Yeah, I feel like I've gotten a lot of the new ones. Yep. Same. I so. think... Jewels are just so good, like a four stat rare jewel, or even the three stat jewel, they are pretty damn good if they have good stats for your build. You can get like whatever you need to fix on your build, you can get it on there. You can get resist if you need, you can get like life or yes. If you need defenses, you can get double dipping damages multiple types. If you need that, I can get like area damage, increased damage, whatever, chaos damage, something like this, and then you can double dip the crap out of your, whatever you're using. But it's really hard to compete with rare jewels as a unique jewel. I feel they have, to add, they have to add something very like unique yeah. and yeah. special and valuable. I mean, some of these new jewels do that. I mean, you know, like the EK Nova jewel. Oh man, can't wait to play that. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, second ignite, that. The second on. ignite is a lot of a lot of stuff. And some of them don't like freeze pulse projectiles mm. and damage. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's like increased damage. I mean, yeah, this uh, projectiles does kind of help, but it's not that great. So it lets you remove GMP, which is good because it's like less damage, but it's not that good. And the, um, are not that good. A way of thinking about that that's kind of helped me kind of accept that design of just making the skill better with a threshold jewel is um, someone suggested to me the idea that it would be interesting if gems, like low level gems like Freeze Pulse, got more incrementally better as they leveled so like when you hit level 10 it got an extra projectile that sort of thing right yep. so i think that jewel these threshold jewels are basically just that a way of like getting to the next level of that gem as you're uh, leveling because you hit you hit level 30 or whatever and you put your threshold jewel in and then the, the that skill just becomes better and more like long-term viable so I, I feel like that's basically where, where they're headed with those threshold jewels. And some of them do more do, do more unique things, which is better overall and more interesting. But I think for some of them, it's just more about like kind of giving these skills more a more natural progression, making them more interesting as they level. Yeah. Uh, some fun. skills have that though, like arc or magma, which get like chains yeah. and stuff per, per level. Yeah, that's true. So it's it's kind of like some skills have that, some skills have a jewel instead, which is 
interesting. I mean, I don't really mind it, but I they have to really balance it. So because the viability of skills depend on how they make these jewels, basically. So they have to kind of re revisit them if they're not used much to make the skill feel good again, or maybe revisit the skill depending on what they want to do. But I think I like like overall I like what they did with those. Most of them are kind of interesting at least. Like the Nova EK is pretty cool. Like a second ignite with burning arrow is a lot of power because ignites are pretty damn strong. Yeah. And the one like the fireball one I always like the rolling flame. I mean there are some some ones that are super cool but kind of questionable like the animate weapon one. I think that's one of the cooler ones as well. But it's the power level is kind of tricky. I feel like I feel like the threshold jewels are like a beta test, to be honest, because they talked about them so freaking much in the past. They were like threshold jewels, this and that. We're gonna do this, and Chris like really hyped it up, and then they got released, and it just completely disappeared. But that was also a time <laughs> where like GGG didn't have a whole lot of time to do other things than the main things they were doing. Like the game was really uh, not that well polished. Everybody was crashing. Like that was when it felt like they couldn't keep up with the pace that they were putting out. And now that yeah. they're doing these, a lot of them feel like, you know, kind of what they did with radius. Now that they're adding like this base radius to abilities with levels up, maybe threshold jewels are, you know, at a certain point, because they're not really exactly worth it, but maybe at a certain point, they're going to be like, okay, so this skill works better with the threshold jewel by default, so it's just going to have the threshold jewel by default, we're going to add it to the skill, and instead implement something like the EK Nova uh, jewel, which changes the mechanic, rather than what Freeze Pulse is, where, you know, it doesn't change really anything, right? <laughs> So maybe they're going to do something like that in the future. I feel like uh, now that they've got more time to to put some more work into it, that's like a real prob possibility. But because they did plan to do a lot of things with it, they just never did. Kind of like volabilities. That was also the same thing. Like, we're going to release all these new volabilities. And then they just kind of ran out of time and nothing's been going on ever since. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah. but now they did, so that was like another chunk yeah. of threshold rules. I, I, I don't know where this was mentioned. I think it might be might have been one of Ziggy's interviews uh, that they wanted to maybe add threshold rules to like gem vendors or to the, to vendors at some point. Mm -hmm. See, I wasn't I, I I wasn't sure anyone knew about that, but then I heard it mentioned, so I guess it's probably okay if I talked about it since it has been mentioned. <laughs> but yeah, yeah in, uh, in three point zero, there's going to be a. There's going to be a jewel vendor like in the in part two of Ooh. the game. You'll have access to a jewel vendor that will vendor nice. or, or they'll sell all the threshold jewels, which um okay. that kind of adds to my idea that this is like a part of the natural gem progression. That's kind of GGG's idea. The fact that adding it to a gem a, a vendor is just like buying gems at a vendor. So yep. I think that's kind of the intention, which it's is basically pretty sick, got, I think. After you get to your highest level support, like after you get spell echo, like maybe like the next quest reward in in Act Six or whatever will be like gem gems, uh, not gems, jewels. Jewels, yeah, yeah. For your for your skills, that could be a cool thing. You know, the the thing I really like about the threshold jewels is that mm, it changes the way like your build or your skill feels, right? Like we we'll talk about like passive skill tree changes probably today, but you know, ultimately that's still, you know, now maybe this pathing takes like level 90 instead of 85 and, you know, it's just like a number change, but with stuff like the EK threshold, um, that actually does change the way like you might like charge into like uh, packs of mobs since there's no like cone anymore. And I think, I think that's what's more important, like changing maybe a, a lesser use skills, like how it feels so that people play it and it feels like maybe a new skill. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think mechanical change is the most important thing. Um, but since you mentioned it though, like what do people think about the new passive skill tree? Because I saw it, got really hyped, thought oh, this is amazing. Again, for right side of tree bow builds, it's mostly right side of tree getting changed. But uh, it doesn't actually do much except for add some elemental viability. The pre-existing builds don't mm -hmm. get touched at all. Like if you try and make like a poison barrage build, you've changed maybe one point to maybe get revenge of the hunted, nothing else has changed. All the ruining is identical. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. I think these changes were good, but I don't think they really changed too much as far as like that right side of the tree hardcore building, like to make builds more interesting for building on the right side of the tree as like a bow build or something like that. It's still, I still just don't want to do it because at the moment with the way the passive tree is. It certainly helps though, but not enough for those sorts of builds, I don't think. Do you think they're going to yeah. do more stuff with it or? Hmm. I don't I don't know like from my trip I don't know what other plans they have for it passive tree it seems like they're pretty happy doing smaller changes now but 
maybe 3.0 will see some bigger changes. I'm not sure. I think 3.0 is going to see some bigger changes as a side effect of some of the other changes they're going to be doing, like some of the more systematic changes, things like double dipping. So I kind of expect that what's going to happen with double dipping is, and this is just complete speculation. I have to, <laughs> I have to remember to say this in case people, people are like, Ziggy's <laughs> leaking information. But um, complete speculation. I think that what will change with double dipping is that they just completely remove double dipping scaling from yeah. all current sources and add more juicy like ignite and poison scaling things to the tree like uh, more nodes and clusters that interact with that so i think we'll see like passive tree changes as a result of these systematic changes like that maybe yeah. same thing with life and es or something yeah. i think overall like you'd say the passive tree is just a little bit of power creep right like if you look at um like crackling speed and arcing blows if you were going some kind of CI crit build, you were there anyways, and it didn't take any travel to get to either of those um, three or four node clusters. But now it's just now it's just three nodes either way, so you automatically save a point if you were some kind of CI crit build. Yep. Yeah. Well, maybe I mean, it's just preparation. Like uh, you know, there things will change anyway in three in three point oh, and they did say that this is like a filler league, so maybe it's just in preparation yeah. to a lot of the other things. I mean, they're adding a new ascendancy, you know, sounds getting reworked. Uh, <laughs> maybe something's going to happen there. Yeah. It will all come together. They're okay. adding the silence ascendancy class. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not, they, currently they, in the, not currently in the game, I'm pretty sure, if I yeah. remember correctly. It was beta tested before when, like, like so, some of the silent classes were added. Like, I think it was mainly Deadeye for Pierce <laughs> and the Berserker for Leech, <laughs> but then they nerfed it out of the game again, and now the silent is gone again. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can get silent. That would be pretty cool. It's funny, too. I wonder if, like, they would just reverse silent. Like, so, I don't think silent would be dominant at all if they just reverted the changes what they did to Scion, like all the nerfs, if they just reverted that. I don't think Scion, it would be playable, but it wouldn't be like the be-all. There's yeah. just so many, like Inquisitor and Elementalist and Necromancer. It's not going to replace those things. I think we should ask our resident Valsparking expert here. Um, would you play, if they reversed the Scion nerfs, would you play Valspark as Scion again, or would you stay Inquisitor? Mm, I'd say Inquisitor, just because like the inevitable judgment is just like way too mm. good. Um, the cast and attack speed, you always have those up, like 100% of the time. There's never a point where those, mm -hmm. like, recently attacked and recently casts aren't up. So, I don't know, just familiar, too. Scion is, uh, the skill tree would be almost exactly the same, right? Two points by, like, the yeah, attack speed but what on the about, right side. what about that new flask with penetration, though? Some people mm, are saying yeah. that maybe, you know, penetration is the way to was, go now. I was thinking about that. Can only get zero, right? Yeah, because I was, I was thinking, I was like, you know, it's it's pretty rare for mobs to have like over like forty about, right? Resist something like that. So if the if the wiki stuff is correct, so I was like, huh, maybe. But then, mm, but then you I roll the E and I mean, resist on your map, and then they suddenly have like one hundred something. And even yeah, even true. with that's elementalist, true. you can get like sixty six percent or something penetration. So that flask is pretty OP, you know. Even on a maximum yeah. resistances, you can go minus. You can go, yeah, you can go zero. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think at some point it's like it's like the only thing stopping your Valspark is the attack speed, right? So I want that uh, that juicy instruments of virtue, and then also the the augury. You get two percent max res for free. How crazy is that? It's like just absolutely insane. You get two percent max res. Wait, what? Where? Who? Because it's. Okay, because it's... It gives it's, you reduced uh, alley damage. Yeah, anyway. it's the, like, the equivalent it's, it's less. of oh, okay. yeah, yeah, It's the equivalent like of two right, max right. res, you know? Like, people pay right. crazy amounts of money to get that on a chest, and so... Okay, okay, okay. I can see that. That's all right. Uh, overall, Valspark's not that great, guys. It's kind of... It hurts your hands. It's kind of boring. <laughs> it <hurts your> hands. <laughs> don't play it. Yeah. Best reason to not yes. play build it. It really hurts your hands on your keyboard. Please don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um... Yeah. So on that note, like, are there any other un new uniques since we just talked about the Wise Oak that you think are kind of going under the radar a little bit? Ooh. I know that So's been waiting. Sorry, I know that Cute Dog has been waiting to talk about this for a while. Oh, it is the goal. Oh, oh. <laughs> so it's it's so good. I mean, like, here's the thing, right? Like, who cares about numerical power, right? Like, you get a uh, hundred percent more damage you get like you know 20 percent attack speed it, th those things don't matter you want something that 
gets you excited about playing the game. And so I put on the goal. Like I was like, oh, let's just try this. It looks cool. Lesser shrine. And so I like went into my first map and I like this like shrine spawns, like acceleration. And if you guys like don't know, basically, um, well, let me just let me just run down the list a little bit. You get 15% move speed, 53% proc speed from acceleration. Um, that's like out of control, right? So like basically, if you're a Vol Sparker, you don't you don't need that much move speed or you don't need that much um, proc speed anymore if you can't afford it and you still feel amazing, you know. And that's just like one of the shrines. But oh, this item gets me so jazzed. <laughs> uh, I will say I, I just put that on for leveling. People suggest that I use it for leveling. So it starts at level 38. You can use the goal. And that thing has like 80 life and can get like 220 mm. ES and it has like 30 cold res and then shrines. And it's 30, at level, level 38? 38. <laughs> yeah, it's level 38. It's, it's cra- insane. It's kind of crazy. It's, like, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It, you don't really feel it until you use it. Like I haven't used it. And I, that was that was especially with cute dog in the picture because when i found it i was like i can't believe mr cute dog likes this there's like no way because it drops the shrines and you have to you have to click on mm-hmm. them and they're they've That's got like annoying. a really awkward they've got like an awkward uh, window too like it's hard to click them sometimes a lot of the times yeah. but then uh yeah i mean once you get used to the clicking it's insane like even to yeah. the point where somebody in the in my chat today was like do you think that the ghoul shrines should be automatically <laughs> picked up? I'm like, are you crazy? I mean, this shit is already like almost the best item. Like, it's almost mandatory to yeah. use it. If they were added to you on by default, you wouldn't have to click them. I don't think there would be any other helmet for a life or CI build that anybody would use. Like, they're, Especially... they're just so nuts. You play hardcore, right? So, I mean, the most common shrines are the defensive shrine and the, yeah. the all resist shrine. Yeah, it's like the all four resist max gives you 4% res. Yeah. max res and you get what? the resist on top of it. And then the defensive, like at my current level of gear, it's like 20 something percent more ES. Yeah. And it's always up because they're so common, you refresh them and it's 30 seconds. It's even, it's even worse because everybody talks about the lesser shrines, but the big shrines also oh. fuck you up more. And they last yeah, longer too. Shrines. Like if you ever pick up uh, like an acceleration <laughs> shrine with the ghoul, yeah. you, it's just like <laughs> my caustic arrow turns into like t- triple vault spark or something. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Lasts a it's minute so and five fast. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, don't mind me, guys. I'm just buying all the gold right now. <laughs> yeah, that, that on a temporal like temp chains maps with that actually feels really. They feel good because if you find an acceleration shrine. Mm-hmm. You know, it lasts a f- even a lesser one. It lasts a full freaking minute. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and during that time, you've already dropped like almost three uh, other shrines. So you're running around with like three yeah. or four shrine effects with a like a big one That's too. A... The last two minutes, <laughs> it's crazy. Have you it's heard nice. about the uh, bug with it? If you're using it in a party and the person not wearing the gull clicks the shrine, you both get the buff. Do you really? That. That's what I heard. I heard that from a few different people. I haven't tested it myself because I've mostly been playing solo when I was using the goal on my eye shot character. But, that might uh, be intentional though. Didn't they? Yeah, didn't they change it so that, that was shrine pickups um, are like AOE to uh, nearby uh, people? No, but the thing was is apparently if the person wearing the helm picks up the shrine, it's not shared. Apparently it was only well, the person the not wearing it. Maybe that maybe was the weird the bug. bug. I don't know. But... um. Mm. It just seems like such an insane level of power to just have one item in a group to Crazy. give to everyone is insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds really cool. They could even do that on support then, maybe. It's really cool. Yeah, for sure. Support yeah, got a lot and, of love. And they're like 10 Chaos as well. Like just Yeah, they're, real, they're a common drop. They uh, were 10 Chaos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah not, not yeah, probably now, now like 516 exalts right now. And I, they're all <laughs> listed by me. <laughs> probably it says probably first, and let me just say one more thing all right carve i saw your comment saying saying having time to pick up shrines playing volspark first of all buddy that's like saying you shouldn't use headhunter because you might get soul eater and not be able to gain souls um there's there's gonna be instances where you're standing still casting and you'll be able to see shrines the the big issues with it though is on bright maps um it's hard to see the shrines because it's like it's a golden color it. And it's a bright map. You're like, where is that thing? <laughs> yeah, it's. I just look at the map because I can never see them. And they've got like, it's got like a weird delay too. It, you don't yeah. after you've killed the mob, it doesn't like it emerges from the ground and takes like a second, and then it, boop, it's there. But mm-hmm. uh, 
Yeah, that feels kind of weird, but it's still so rewarding. How is it still viable then? Like, if it takes like a second, that's like five boss bar maps, right? It's too broken though. <laughs> it feels <laughs> good. I don't it know. It's all good. Another that's what, thing, that's what um, I thought too. I, I'll have to try it out. After you, yeah. you convinced me, I'll really have to try it out. Something that's weird is um, when you go into a map, the 20 second cooldown starts instantly. So you can't get it for the first 20 seconds because otherwise you could just mm. like kill, like re rezone like a billion times and get like 10 shrines, go into the boss. I um I've noticed some weird like some weirdnesses with it in general. Like I was getting it proccing on bosses that didn't have any ads active, and then people were saying that apparently me killing my totem by resummoning it was was summoning a yeah. shrine. Huh. So you can even get them on bosses just by apparently spamming totems. <laughs> I, I, that, I like I swear like it's happened a few times. I haven't like gone in and tested it yet, but it seems like there's some weird bugs where it's spawning when it shouldn't be. It's also yeah. really good if you, because it spawns in lab off anything you kill, like the little skeletons that Zara spawns, summons them, which is really nice. Mm. Um, and also one thing which I think is really undervalued, because it's hybrid evasion energy shield, the colors are actually really helpful in like every build. It's yeah. quite often that you're playing like a pure evasion character, a pure armor character, but you need like a wither totem setup, or you need those random like blasphemy uh, setups. So having this one hybrid piece means you can get really easy off colors, which is usually really difficult. So just mm -hmm. everything about the item is insane. It has like good enough energy shield for a CI build. It has very good life for a life build, and it has colors to match basically any single build. It's just amazing. Yeah, but yeah. like, is it is it at a stage now where you would think that it's broken? Like, do you want? I think it's broken. I think it's pretty you think broken. It's broken. I mean, yeah. to be fair, I did actually. There was a period where I unequipped it. The first one I got, I got off Kadero, and uh, I put it on my ice shot raider. And there was a bit where I was just like speed running, and because I was speed running so quickly, I had to unequip it because it was slowing me down. But the second you you actually start pushing relevant content, or you're not playing a completely face roll character, um, it's just insane. And the fact that it also carries you all the way through leveling can be used in literally every single build. Like it's the only times you can't really use it in a build is a build which has to use a certain unique helm, and there are very yeah. few, very very few helms that you have to use. Yeah. So in yep. that sense, I think it's pretty broken. Yeah. You got to think about like, what do you give up for using that? And then, so uh, a well-rolled hubris that people can reasonably afford maybe in the next week is 400 ES, right? Yeah. So you give up about four, 200 ES and it's basically asking, what would you rather have like 20 something percent more ES all the time and like 4% max res or this flat 200 all the time? Plus with the option of getting them. Because I think the thing that makes it so broken is that um, two out of the three most common shrines are OP, max yep. resist, and then the defensives, yeah. and that's they're always up. You like never lose them. Hmm. And it even yeah. has resists on it. That's something. It yeah. has yeah. resists. A lot of these items are like, oh, I want to use this. I want to use this. I want to use this. Oh wait, hang on. I now need to get resist on jewels. This still has forty percent cold res, which is huge. Like yeah, it doesn't it, really have a downside. Yeah, every single stat is golden, and it fits into like every single build. It's amazing. Yeah, but what yep. would be like a reasonable downside for this without trashing the item? Like, I, you can't I really don't, give it I don't think GGG it's even does sometimes. downsides anymore. Like whenever people talk about, <laughs> well, no, like when people talk about, oh, this unique has no downsides. When was literally, when was the last time you saw a new unique which had a downside on it? That is also used or in general, because in general, there are a lot of, lot of uniques yeah. that have downsides still, but that are actually No, but used. ones which recently came out. Valyrium? There you go. That's actually used, even. Boom. Get, get wrecked. Okay, no, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. I don't know. But that's like uh... one, one I could remember from the top of my head. But yeah, they, I mean, they, they still do downsides, but they also do no downsides. Or, like, Skyport downsides. Yeah. Hey, guys, Vinktus has a downside, Kang. Okay? Yeah. Kang. Okay. <laughs> Vinktus. Oh, one more thing. But they, but they added that in the patch. If... If you get a real resist shrine, you're at 93% um, max res, and then you pop your Vink Tars, you're at 101% <laughs> lightning res. Obviously, it doesn't gain, do anything. Do you gain but... life? When... <laughs> no, no, but still, you're at 100%. Imagine like some Pathfinder that wants to use this, and then they run Domination Stones, and they just have like their Dying Sun, Ruby Flask, Taste of Hate, Vink Tars, and just running around with 100% all res all the time. <laughs> That's what it used to be. Yeah, that's People when could get hundred percent. Before they nerfed the, all the flasks, the elemental flasks, you could actually get that. Before yeah. they removed Apparently... five percent maximum resistance from the tree or something. Oh yeah, that, from that, a single that, 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 node. Well, yeah. 
That is about it. Appa- apparently, the goal is already tripled in price. I'd just like to mention, <laughs> since I've been talking about it. It's they a were common see last guys. night, and now, yeah. and now they're thirty. <laughs> I, 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 I wonder. You should stop talking about it now before it gets too expensive. Okay. Well, I already got mine. So. Well, on that note, I've already got like ten. <laughs> I, so I don't I'm, have I'm one. Good. I kind of want to try it. I'm um, still a cell phone, bitches. Yay! <laughs> what do you guys think about cherubims then this is another item it's not as op as the gull but this is another item which i look at it and just go oh 80 percent chaos damage the double dips and 100 life and increased leech seems good i don't know i think um i do think it's oh yeah it's not as op as gull but yeah i think i think it's it's more currently you think it's more to recognize you think it's more op 80% chaos I would say chest piece. Definitely like under recognized. I've been buying these for about a chaos each in hardcore. I knew that I wanted to play with one, so I did the thing of like, oh, I'll set up a PE trade window and I'll like go for near perfect rolls. One got listed, it was like one out, could board it. Another one got listed slightly better. I'm like, I may as well buy that as well. So now I've got like 10, each one's like got one more point. And buying 10 of them cost me something like maybe seven chaos combined. It's insane. You wouldn't be planning on doing anything unethical like flipping those now. Yeah. Which I think we should, no, literally, I this, think is, we this is literally what it is. This is literally what it is. Yeah. I'm so bad at the game, I have to have multiple sets for the same character. Because it's like, I want to play this one build. <laughs> okay, I've ripped four sets of its gear. Let's go through. Um, so <laughs> this is, I've got uh, enough right. gear to make like one assassin character. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I, I can I can confirm that. Taki likes to die after he equips all his endgame gear. Yeah. Like right after, he's just like, we'll go into like one map or two, but he will not have rolled his flasks or something like that. And he just like bleeds out, gets frozen yeah. by a box, something like this and dies. Yeah. Like every every single time. I can't believe what you get. Is it seriously one chaos? It's, Turbans it's is crazy one chaos. Cheap. It, because I, I mean, I haven't looked at any of the prices, right? Like, I didn't even, I didn't even know how much a ghoul is, but like from the sound we of it, we get it. You self found. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got like vegan powers. Okay, relax. No, but like does, I haven't looked at the prices, guys. and it's it just no, it, it's like uh, it really blows my mind. You know, there are just items that like that that are so cheap. I don't know what's going on. Maybe everybody else is cell phone too. Is nobody talking about this stuff or what? I don't know. Uh, Especially yeah. the goal. Mm. <laughs> I think it's one of those things where whenever new items come out, there there's those like early guys who get in there, they're like dedicated theory crafters or dedicated flippers, so they stockpile it. Then you get the guys who wait for their like favorite streamer to mention it in a video. And then there's the <laughs> I'm going to wait for it to get listed for five exalts on hardcore because you don't want to be stingy. But um yeah, I know I think a lot of people just wait until Mathel makes a video or Ziggy makes a video um, because there are so many things which just they should not be the price that they are it's like anyone yeah. if you actually sat and thought about how much you're paying for these items it's just it's stupid mm-hmm. no. yeah, I think it's overall it's I mean what, what makes the prices demand not how good the item is and if people just don't realize it it doesn't change or if they just don't care maybe even I mean, there are a lot of uniques have been changed. They changed like 100 something uniques this patch. I don't think too many people actually went through every single one of them and actually checked all the changes out. Oh, just... I, I had to go through that list <laughs> six times. I went through it the first three times, and my net would cut out halfway through the recording every time. I got a very intimate knowledge of that list. It was beautiful. It's the opposite for me. I, I read it like that school book, you know, you have to read, yeah. where you just read read it and somebody asks you like what did you just read and you're like i don't know that's exactly <laughs> what i did with this i just read the entire thing really throughout it was like it took like six hours don't remember a goddamn thing anytime i see any item i have to read it all over again yep. same <laughs> it was just too much it was so much but i think that's the coolness of it you know you don't even realize you find an item that you're like oh okay it's this whatever and then you actually start reading it, and you're like, okay, this is useful for me, because I'm solo cell found, you know? <laughs> that sort of stuff. <laughs> That's pretty rewarding. <laughs> oh, really? Do you play solo cell found rounds? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I um, don't want to talk about it. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> On the topic of uh, ch- cher- cherubims, which I always thought it was called cherry bombs, just by the way, but um, <laughs> ch- cherubims, cherubims, ch- cherry uh, I think that the fact that it's cheap is is definitely like part of it is that it's a bit under recognized at the moment but on the other other hand though it's um it's a chest armor in a slot that typically those builds use a defensive item like kintsugi or um lining coil or something like that like there are probably some other ones you can do like 
life-based essence strain or something, but you're going to struggle with colors maybe. Um, but I think there's not like that many builds that are going to take advantage of it that really want to use it currently. So that's probably having an impact on the fact that they're a bit I, cheap I, as I well. I don't know. Like, I definitely agree with you mm -hmm. because a lot of the builds that I've been planning out recently, again, bow builds have been, let's go Tornado Shot so I can use a Combs. But if it's a choice of, should I use a Combs or should I use this in a Poison build, it's pretty hard to pick between the two. Um, but considering mm -hmm. that Poison's kind of the go-to thing right now, and considering it is hybrid, so you can get colors on it pretty easily. It's for any like non CI build, it's just so much damage. I don't think you can really pass it up. It's like any added chaos attack build basically yeah. lost this. Yeah. Especially, yeah. especially since also if you look about the defensive choices again, I'm just going to talk about evasion because that's what I play. Like you have lightning coil, which is great, but it's only really good against one form of damage, so it just kind of loses to flat HP. You have Kintsugi, which is great, but it's inconsistent, so it just kind of loses to flat HP. So for most of like the defensive chess pieces, the real option is combs or like just whatever you can get. So if your option is combs or whatever you can get, I feel like this trumps the other options. But that's just my opinion. I don't know. I think mean, Kintsugi is pretty good, like general as well. I really like it. No, no, no. Yes, we're, yes. we're now having the so many... conversation. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's not good, okay? It's, not... it's, the thing it's, is... be it's better than most people think. No, no, no. <laughs> I think no. It's, it's not better than a lightning is, coil. None is. of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> if you build right, if you know how to make builds rise, it's better than a lightning coil. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I think the problem, <laughs> the, thing of the problem with uh, the Maybe not is that it doesn't have any ES and Chaos builds tend to be like ES based builds. I mean, all builds tend to be ES based builds, let's be honest, but Chaos builds especially like to be ES based. So that's definitely a downside of that thing. I don't know. I, I wonder a lot of the, I feel like a lot of people early on, people caught up as to how strong MOM is, but now you can really implement MOM into a lot of things. I feel like some builds will just be like, you know what, instead of using another Herald of Thunder for a 3% damage increase, I'll just use MOM and that's going to make life builds a lot stronger. But uh, I don't know if it would exactly apply to like attack based builds and all that shit if it's in the top. But I feel like eventually it's going to get to a point where people will consider life a little bit better now. Especially if GGG overdoes it with the ES trashing or whatever they're going to do in 3.0. You can make quite easy attack-based uh, Mind of Matter Berserker builds, because they have the inbuilt leech, and they have the advantage that attack-based skills are generally very cheap, so you're never really going to be an issue of running out of mana, because your leech will naturally keep you flowing perfectly fine. So that's one decent thing, but you then have to play a Mind of Matter Berserker, so... Yes. Mind over matter, new meta, man. We'll see. Have you guys no. seen Immortal Flesh? How about that shit? Immortal Flesh is crazy. The belt is ridiculous. Yeah, that hasn't really been mentioned. That's that's yeah. definitely pretty insane now. Is it also one chaos? Like goddamn. Uh, yeah, it's like Probably. an hour. Like, it's it's cheaper than a chaos. I think they're not worth anything. Because no. <laughs> everyone picks everyone picks it gets it thinking they're a um like a headhunter because it drops in its level build or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then and then <laughs> no one picks it up. I'm saying like heaps of people just like not even pick them up, and I'm like this build sh like is actually really good now. Like what the hell? <laughs> it's crazy. It's like it's old Doctor Gamma. <laughs> what did they change? I don't remember. Uh, like, they took off the, the all res, of. and now it's like minus 15 to 25 resistances instead. Yeah, it's yeah. not a real problem to deal oh, with. So, oh, so they just basically made it usable. Basically, yeah, you yeah. can yeah. use it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's like 10 flat mana regeneration, a ton of, like the life regen, whatever, but mana regen? Like, how does that even... How does that compare to a clarity? I haven't really looked yeah, at it I think it it's the equivalent like a level 8, level 9 clarity. It's something like that, if I remember correctly. Oh, really? I thought yeah. that's more. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, yeah, it's, like, it's like level level 8. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, maybe, up to, you know up to 10 flat mana. Listen, uh, the community is going to have to catch up to this one. Uh, I'm ahead of my time. All right? Don't worry about it. <laughs> said. Raise effect. Oh, have no. you guys uh, tried out any of the new health pots? They're kind of cool. I quite like them. Like either Blood of the Karui or um, uh, Forbidden Taste. They're, They're like, so much uh, better, but I just also can't really see using them a lot of the time over the... Because I just always need the suffix. 
Like yeah, yeah like if, if you're running loads of unique flasks, then you're screwed. But so at the moment, I'm running some wonky champion siege blister build. You can blame Wabachar for that. And uh, I'm running one of these, and it's actually really good with quality. It heals you for like 3.5k over two and a half seconds, and then again at the end. So it's like a super bubbling. And if you compare that to most life flasks, which will struggle to heal you for like one sixth of your total HP if you have a decent HP pool, having one flask which sort of just heals you is quite nice. The problem is I want that to be the other way around on my flasks, typically. I want the insta yeah. first, and then they yeah. heal over time afterwards. Same. I don't want to be, like, slowly healing up. And then it's, that's the <laughs> thing, though. Like, that's the thing. Percent. Because it's over 2.5 <laughs> seconds, it's actually pretty quick. Because it's, like, it's 3.5k, so it's over 1,000 a second. So it's not instant, but it's pretty close to instant. So many Just times flat. have I been, like, dropped to 10%, insta-healed back up by smashing my insta-flask yep. three times, and then dropped down to 10%, and then done it again. Yeah, but that's the, that's the thing, that's the thing, is you can use one of these, ahead. you can use, no, but you can use one of these <laughs> with Just an instant-flask. Just plan two seconds ahead of when you're going to die. It's not that hard, guys. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, 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 but if you... If you found listen. No, no, but think about it. If, things, if you right? use one of these with an instant flask, because normally what you do is, like, if you get hit, you just spam your instants. Whereas instead, you can press one of these and an instant, and it will naturally keep you going. Hmm. I, I haven't convinced oh, you. I haven't no. convinced you. Okay, feels There's a no, Vessel of Inktar <laughs> thing in the game. I heard you're that's giving a yes, That's unethical. Fuck. It's unethical. You know? <laughs> I only care about ethical flasks. Oh, no. Ah, oh, I forgot I'm only softcore player here. Oh. That's like the well, same I, I argument of, uh, oh, when yes. people say OG. Yep. But like, I, I, I played like a half of the Super Slow. I also, I also lack, I'm lacking Asian genes, so I can't, can't play that fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried the Asian name with the OG, but it just doesn't work. It just doesn't improve my clear speed at all. Maybe I have to become a Twitch emote. <laughs> Dude, Yoji, I don't You're think I've ever, I've watched are. your stream a lot, man. I don't think I've ever seen you using uh, Shield Charger Whirling Blades. No, I don't, uh, I don't no. like them. I, I actually don't like how they feel. Uh, Espe especially Whirling Yoji. Blades. Shield Charger is all right. Yeah, shoot shots nice. Until you run into things a bunch, and then it's like, ah, mm -hmm. oh, hitbox yeah. a little bit big. C cute dog. How would you feel if they put a three, like a cooldown, the same way Flame Dash has on movement mm -hmm. skills? How, how what would be your I mean, they're basically removing shield charge as a build then, right? So I can go back and be like, hey, P hey, Chris, people play shield charge. It's, you can't change it. You can't change Just it. Give a threshold jewel, bro. Yeah, fun. like a threshold jewel. Sure. Yeah. Hmm. I'd still, I'd still use it. It's just so nice. Like, it's so controllable with, like, the distance. You can charge in one spot and not move. That's pretty crazy for, like, different kinds of, uh, like, cast on crit. like cast Explain how that works in terms of, like, IRL physics, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're just slamming your shield into the ground. <laughs> so so you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, like, you know. <laughs> You wouldn't make like a crying video and quit quit forever. No, nah, nah. like there's it's there's so other fun. there's other builds that uh, don't use shield charge guys that I play. <clears throat> like, mm, like, uh, like a wiki here. Builds. Skill. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go the I mean, I like you know someone people in my chat are often like, why do Asians always play trigger builds? Like, why do they all play these fast trigger builds? I, I don't know. It's just something something so fun about them. But I wouldn't go full Project PT if they nerfed uh, like move speed skills and adding cooldown and stuff like that because, um, you know, some I have to say like I know it's all like you have to have a move. If I I won't play a build unless like right now unless it has shield charge or it can use like whirling blades or something. But if it were removed, there's something to be said about the smoothness of of using a um, alchemist quicksilver flask of adrenaline. It's it's so nice, you know. You just contour around all the little yeah. um, blockages and it's it's pretty fast. It's okay, you know. It's like three on move speed PTs. builds, when you have indoor maps, it feels so good. Because yeah. shield yeah. charging in indoor maps is oh my god. <laughs> it was yeah. literally, it was literally the reason why I play Caustic Arrow. Because I was like, wait, I don't have to use a movement ability. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I don't like it. I, I feel like you're forced into using movement abilities. I don't know. It yeah. just feels so punishing not to use them. So I just play builds that can't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Staff, staff spell cast a meta incoming. I mean, no, I, ca I can't ever bring myself to play staffs. I do a similar thing where I go, okay, I'm either playing a Pathfinder because Pathfinder gets super quicksilvers, or I'm going Queen of the Forest because I don't like using spammy movement skills. So I only ever do one of those two things. 
And there have been loads of really cool staff builds that I want to play, but I can't bring myself to play a staff build because that's just like the worst thing in the world. It, blink arrow feels bad, but at least I can actually use it. Whereas on a cast, okay. you, you never really have enough attack speed to make leap slam feel good. It's just like you very dramatically dunk across the screen. And flame dash is great, but I don't like using it in hardcore because it bugs out sometimes. It's like you flame dash and it just sort of doesn't do what it's meant to do. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I have seen like flame dash desyncs and stuff in the game. That's pretty awesome. You can do some cool stuff with flame dash. You can name lock onto teleporting targets and teleport with them. <laughs> It's pretty Sick. cool. Yeah, you like, can you can like with Mervo, for instance, as she teleports around the room. If you teleport at the right time, you just teleport with her. It's really, pretty that's cool. like awesome. diving into yeah. the wormhole as it closes behind a ship that's yeah. entering light speed or something. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. It was really <laughs> easy to do in the past too, before they nerfed like the mobility of Flame Dash. It was so cool to use that in races, but then they nerfed it, and yeah, now it's a, I'm a lot more awkward to do. It's like a one one frame perfect combo, you know. It's not as but disappointing play as playing also. modern day <laughs> leap slam, though. If you ever played old school leap slam, it's yeah. such a frustrating skill to use now. It really feels gut so gutted. Usually, so, when something gets nerfed, you kind of get used to it after a while. But I still can't get used to the how way leap slam feels now. I why did they, they change did. that? Yeah, why yeah, did they do like, it in the first place? It was, it was for it was for low level racing, but oh fuck off! Like they don't care about racing. <laughs> oh really? You think they? No, my kids are racing. That, that was yeah. that was what was mentioned. Yeah, it was really it was, um, basically hell like racing, yeah. Cause it, but yeah, basically, it was pretty fucking dominant in racing at the time. Yep. Uh, yeah, but that's so insane. I don't know. I well, think they could, they could now try to give, get it just... Like, when we it. say racing and people are like, Digi-Dude doesn't care about racing, I mean, racing also equals leveling new characters in a league, right? It also yeah. equals the new the push and things like that, right? So that's yeah, also I, I, racing. I just feel like they changed it already when casters were dominant in, in like, early leveling and stuff. I don't know. Wasn't it that was already... A, it, was a, it was a weird decision at the time, and I still think it's a weird yeah. decision. Yeah. Like, Flame Blast was out. Flame Blast used to be level 10 and stuff like that. I, I don't know. That sounds weird. But, eh. Like, do you think Whatever. they'll go back and address that stuff before the Xbox comes out? Like, I'm hoping a lot of these skills get some re-love before the Xbox. Because if you're going to make the change, you do it before you launch your game, right? I can't see them buffing move, sk move skills, but I also can't really see them significantly nerfing them. Because they kind of... So GGG has this, like, nerf and, and buff budget, right? Like, before the community riots and leaves, you can only do so many buffs... Sorry, nerfs, that you have to counteract them with buffs. So it's like... I would say maybe, like, 10... You can, max they can go is, like, 10% of the overall arbitrary nerf amount compared to buffs each patch because people were right about like that 10 percent buff those 10 percent nerfs compared to the massive amount of buffs that are yep. coming in right like we had yeah. so we had like a couple of nerfs this patch and like aoe being kind of the big standout one compared to massive list of buffs like 100 <laughs> uniques buffed and all these other things but it's like the focus is still on the aoe nerf right because it yeah. is something that people yeah, feel more yeah that's exactly how humans work in general, right? Yeah. <laughs> they focus on that. So, like... the buffs that would need to go into a patch for them to nerf move skills, that's what I'm getting at here. Can you imagine that patch? Like, they would everything, have to double one everything else. Everything now, yeah. but you don't have move skills. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> that's issue, though, because everything has so much damage now, right? Like, let's say let's say you had a, a skill that could just teleport you anywhere on the map, but you had shit damage, like, back in, uh, you know, the desync days. It wouldn't matter how fast you move. It's just that we have so much power creep that now it's just like, okay, how fast can I get to that next pack, right? And that, that's the yep. issue. And, like, we keep getting more and more damage, especially with, like, now we, we're going to get a Pantheon system in 3.0, and then that's that's power creep because it allows you to like sacrifice certain defensives depending on like yep. where you go, and so now you get even more damage. So now it's now it's just like it's something that we drift towards you naturally because you don't need that much damage in this game for like white, blue, yellow mobs. Yeah, I I don't understand why we're getting the pantheon system. I've tried explaining this to a friend of mine because he said, oh, it can't be that bad. It's one of those things that, at best, this is purely from a power creep point of view. At best, it's so insignificant that there's no point including it. At worst, it's just straight up power creep. There's, like, no real middle ground. And it's one of those things that oh. for some builds in particular, it's huge. Like, if you think about it from a Righteous Fire point of view, there's one node which we know is 5% reduced damage taken, and there's another one which is 5% reduced damage over time taken. Like, that's a pretty significant buff to a Righteous Fire build. Yeah, but you never know. They might be doing, like, other things on top of that. 
you really never know. They, they might. Haven't, they haven't done a while though. Like we've always said, like with the sentence he had, but they might change like the game, make some other parts yeah, yeah. to compensate, and it never happened. Like so what far. would like realistic? Mm. What would you do to change it? Because it's a thing that you don't have it unlocked automatically. It's something that you don't unlock until you finish the main playthrough of the game, and then you don't get the upgraded versions until you've killed the map equivalent. So it's not like you can do like a global rebalancing of damage. It's something that you won't have unlocked from the start, and especially when it's stuff which is removing. 5% of X damage. One thing which is nice about it is from a reflect point of view, it deals with the reflect in a way. If I'm an Inquisitor, Fire Inquisitor, I'm really afraid of reflect, I can just take 5% reduced fire damage. Match that with a tiny bit of reduced reflect on the tree, sure, that's a better way of nerfing reflect. But, um, I don't know, it's just a system where I don't understand why they're doing it. Like, I think the answer to this question and the question of nerfing move skills is that they're not going to nerf move skills, and yeah, they're going to add more things that make us more powerful. The answer is going to be mechanics like Breach, where you have a tough fight in a location okay. for a while. That nerfs move skills, you know? You don't... Yep. If you're in a location for a while because you're doing a fight... And I mean, no one hates Breach because you have to stop moving, right? Yeah, that's like, true. Not really, because it's exciting because you have this, like, epic battle for a while and you get sick loot and everything. So that'll be, like, the nerf to move skills and also, you know, the way of kind of addressing power creep is by adding more things like that that's woven into the otherwise easy parts of the game. Yeah, yeah but then when you... I don't know, like, uh, I feel like in the past, nerfs were really poorly received. In every, like, interview where Chris would mention that, he would always be like... He would... A essentially sound scared of nerfing stuff because yeah, of how they, they are because of the community reception yeah, yeah. exactly but the aoe stuff i feel like prior to the patch it was very poor like people were really whiny about it but now i don't know i feel like the community is okay with it i haven't really seen people whining about it all that much and it was clearly broken and now people are okay i mean maybe because projectiles are still very much playable but I feel like people have received the AOE changes like pretty okay. Hmm. So I, maybe I kinda, movement skills could I, be I've, that I've, way too. I've heard a lot of complaints. Although, to be fair, the only one I've really heard about has been Blasphemy. Blasphemy's been the way one I've heard about. I don't think I, Blasphemy yeah, but like, come on. It, no, but this is the thing. If like, somebody, listen, okay, come on. If somebody's like, Blasphemy is too weak now, like, you just call him a retard No, but this is, this is the thing, I, I, <laughs> I, I agree with you to an extent, but this is this is my main issue that I have with the AOE change and the Blasphemy change, etc. is when you talk about it from a purely defense point of view, yes, in the best builds, Blasphemy is broken. But if you're playing, like, a... Build. No, 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 but think about it, right? If you're playing, like, a inferior, ranged, I don't know, let's say for the sake of argument, right side of tree evasion build, and you're trying to rely on something like Blasphemy now... Their AoE is so insignificant that it's not even like viable as a defense option. Oh. You you travel twelve points to Hexmaster and and you're fine, dude. You're blasting. Twelve points? Okay. Where are you yeah, getting no those problem. from? Like, bro, you, you, it's, you don't have enough life blasphemy, on the right like side of the tree back. anyway. You can travel twenty points across the tree and it's worth it still. <laughs> don't <laughs> listen, don't worry about like it. Level one hundred and ten character. Yeah. yeah. All, crafting. <laughs> also, leadership does work on it because it's area of ra uh, aura radius. And it works because it doesn't say non-cursed radius. So you can lose leadership and Hexmaster. They both work and give you yeah. pretty good blasphemy AOE. Leadership is 50% now, too. It's yeah, it's, it's, it's really not that bad. So, yeah. What do you think of... Oh, go on. Uh, Hexmaster is next to CI as well, so it's not even traveling for 90% of the If builds. you're a CI build, yeah. Yeah, if you're not a CI build, why are you <laughs> complaining yeah. about power creep? Huh. <laughs> You're in the wrong patch if you're not a CI build. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just, You've gone to the wrong patch. Just accept it. I don't know. What do you I think, think about like the... If... I'll go on, Ziggy. Go on. I was going to say, I would like if, as a community, we could celebrate nerfs a little more. I know, like, I don't agree with every, everything that's come out of the AoE stuff, but the idea that they're trying to address, you know, clear speed by touching things like AoE and stuff like that and trying to make more systematic changes is something that I would like to celebrate, you know, like... Yep. I think that's. I, I want to see a bit more yeah. positivity for nerfs because nerfs don't necessarily mean a negative thing, but uh, it's. But, uh, but that's difficult. what I'm talking about. Like in the past, when they nerfed like cast on crit, people would fucking send them death threats and suicide letters and stuff, and streamers would well, quit playing the game and and things. And well, now it's like people are still playing, and you know. I think something that could on. help would, would be if they just had a more. Like, like if the nerf cycle and the buff cycle would be a little bit more like frequent because that way people would maybe get used to more that hey maybe okay maybe they nerfed something this league but it wouldn't the next patch it might just change again 
maybe that could help. I don't know. I could at least see that work. I mean, here, here's the thing, right? Like the the nerfs to the AOE. Like I think the the reason that people are so mad is because it changes like the feel of like people's favorite builds and stuff. And yeah. these builds weren't cheap, right? And so I always imagine the situation where there's like some guy on standard right who has like a full-time job or a family who can't play as much and so he like he like saves all his exalts and he finally buys a 50 exalt assassins cosprey's discharge build and he's so happy you know, he's been playing for months in standard and then he, he comes out and they're like okay here's the nurse for the aoe and the guy's like what the fuck i just spent like two months trying to get this build and then now you change the entire feel of it and then so like i think about that i'm like man i wouldn't feel so good if, if that happened to me like we yeah, play, we play temp leagues and stuff, so it doesn't kind of doesn't matter, but still, it's. But that's movements like that. I can see applied to like movement abilities, right? But like this, it's mm. it's fucking so little AOE. Like it's just a tiny AOE change. It's not that big know. of a deal. I feel like the the intention behind the AOE change is really good, though. That they yeah. wanted to make it non mandatory because you before it was like you're playing an yeah. AOE skill, you either are a slayer or you pick up those two AOE clusters, or you're not an AOE build. Because mm. nobody plays Dead Eye for some reason, and th that's kind of was kind of it. And you always use the AoE gem. Now it's kind of like more of a choice if you want to use the AoE gem or not, or maybe get Dying Sun. If you get like all all of it, if you get like AoE cluster Slayer, Dying Sun, and <laughs> uh, AoE gem, it's not really doing anything at that at that point anymore. But some it, like some skills and some things got hit that definitely didn't need to get hit by it. Like melee splash was like one of the biggest complaints I think I saw. That people were like, yeah, melee yeah, splash yeah. didn't need yeah. needed, didn't need a nerf. Could even use a buff. <laughs> Probably Reeve got hit harder yeah. by it than freaking Blade Flurry did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which, yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. needed to happen. Yep. So no, yeah, no. it seems like there's been a few kind of like unintended consequences, but hopefully that's stuff that they just kind of iron out after a while because this was kind of a systematic change. So. It's gonna take. I guess it's gonna take a while to kind of like yeah, iron yeah. out a few of the things. Like some things have just been missed. Like some parts they didn't like counteract the changes that they probably didn't need to be changed. So that sort of stuff hopefully gets kind of touched in the uh, three by three point Yo, Ziggy, you... I'll, um, I'll go. Oh. Um, Ziggy, you make a lot of like beginner content, right? So when three point comes out, that's probably gonna be the biggest influx of new players you think a new player coming in they're not gonna know anything about the aoe do you think the the certain skills that got hit by it the hardest do you think they'll care or do you think they'll be like oh wow this game is still amazing with like or will they instantly notice a disparity between like you know projectiles versus like i, some I of the think skills? that it creates in its current state a few more noob traps which uh, is a, definitely a big issue for Path of Exile, that people pick a skill and make a build and try to play it, and it just actually doesn't work. And then they ask an experienced member of the community, and they're like, oh, yeah, don't play that. And they're like, well, how the fuck was I supposed to know that? This is a cool-looking skill. <laughs> which that's something GGG really, really needs to be super careful about, is <laughs> those sorts of noob traps. So guilty. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and man, that feels shit to like, get to like level 40 after 80 hours of gameplay, which is probably pretty accurate. <laughs> As an <laughs> and uh, and you've been playing this skill and you hit this brick wall and you, and you're like why don't I have any damage or well, why I can't, like I can't kill packs I watch these streamers and they're killing everything and then <laughs> you're just like yeah no you don't play that skill and that's the community's answer and that's the, the that's correct <laughs> yeah like that's that's something they need to be really careful about because that 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 is like oh okay back to League of Legends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This, it's like, oh, the, the, there are skills in this game that I just should never play. Hmm. Eh. Yeah. Next they, game. They should just make um, amazing MTX for the best noob-friendly skills. Just new, like, things that just look so good that a new player's like, I need to buy that MTX, I'm going to play that skill. I know, the worst is when you have a good MTX for bad skills. It's like, I saw that new Arc MTX, and I was like, oh, that's juicy, but I'm like, hang on, Arc? Nah. <laughs> I'm going to put that away. So, for years, back since I made my first that first arc build, I've been asking for just, like, just can we just get, like, a red arc or something? Just, like, a risking of, like, that'll take, like, two minutes to make up, surely. And uh, they finally release it, and it's now in current year with arc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing. There's no legitimate flame totem, right? reason to I use it. I had the same thing. Everybody yeah. was playing Flame Totem something, and yeah. they never released MTX, and then they changed it and released MTX. It's yeah. <laughs> They literally <laughs> released the first Flame Totem MTX like the week before the patch where they nerfed it. It's yeah. like, GGG, please. That's even worse. That's, this, this is yeah. not, yeah, it's like, <laughs> this, is not, this is not how this works. They should just, right. 
just do it the other way around. If they introduce the skill and they have a feeling, hey, this might be OP, just give us an empty X for it we got because we will play this if it's OP. It, we're great. not. They, nobody's yeah. gonna blame GGG for like, uh huh. So you're baiting us into buying this super cool looking empty X for the skills we are playing because you knew they're <laughs> going to be OP money making skill. Nobody's gonna say that. Everyone's just gonna be happy that there's an empty X if they want to buy it. Yeah. While we're oh, talking so about empty X, can I just very briefly get on a soapbox, just like a five minute soapbox? Yep. Okay, so I just need to draw your attention to something which has been bothering me for a while, <laughs> and it's not that. Hang on, give me a second. Okay, so what you can see in the back of my beautiful pilgrim hat is terrible clipping, and I don't know what they did to the duelist held head. It didn't use to clip, but I, I stopped playing at the end of Prophecy because uh, I was ill. I came back in Breach, and my MTX is now unplayable, and the new hats <laughs> don't clip. So now I'm in the situation where I want, I want to buy the new hat, but if I feel like if I buy the new hat, I'm supporting the old hat clipping. So now I can't buy it. So if someone can fix this, I'll buy the new fucking hats. But until then, and it's <laughs> and it's not just with hats; it's also with like Infernal Helm. But that is uh, that is that's uh, unacceptable. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm so angry about it's it. A like valid every, point. Every no no <laughs> every time I make a character, I'm like, oh cool, I'm gonna play a duelist. I'm like, wait, hang on, I can't use my hat if I play a duelist. Can oh I do this God. as a ranger? <laughs> like literally, uh, I'm I'm that obsessed with my MTX. I'm like, I'm, I can't play duelist. It's like it's rude. male classes in general. I don't know why all the sets that I always use, they always clip so bad. Like Templar is fucking Templar's ridiculous. Terrible. Oh my god. Because Templar's yeah. got this weird pose that he uh, yeah. adopts that's so really clipping. Yeah. Have you ever put uh, a banner on the Templar? He does this weird like jiggle and it looks even worse when he, if he's got any back <laughs> attachments. It's so bad. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I know why I only play Witch. Yeah, same. Yeah, I, I realized that I only play Witches. I, I, when I went through my characters, like all like Witch Occultists and Elementalists, some Necromancers as well. Like, I, I only play Witch. Which does MTX is good. Yep. Mm -hmm. She carries sword, two handed swords the best. She does, does she do that like backwards thing? Yeah, something? like backwards dragging yeah, behind cool. her, like full anime style. That's, that's some anime <laughs> shit right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They changed that too. I remember when they, like, all classes had some cool animations, and they changed that too for whatever reason. If people play back in the day, like Shadow would hold the staff like oh, behind that was back so good. and shit. Yeah, yeah. Was it was so dude. sick, and they changed it. I don't know why. They Probably had some really cool clipping poses. reasons. Yeah. Because some some people were complaining about this, like Taki was. No, but like the, no, the Shadow <laughs> no, was staff be... thing was literally yeah. the coolest thing in the game. Yeah, I, used that was to, before, I used to play yeah, that Shadows. Was before they made yeah. the MTXs for yeah. staffs. Yep. Yeah. I played Shadows just for the way they held it. It looked so good. The first time I saw that, I was like, I must play Taran Shiver Shadow, because this is just awesome. It is Pog Champ, yeah? Nothing. Yeah, I did a two handed sword. There's no shadow, MTXs. Just yeah. it. There's no MTXs for staffs. No. That was my joke. Feels God bad. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You use Dragon Spear for staffs, right? <laughs> No, is there is there an MTX? I don't think so. Yeah, there is the dragon everything. spear, but he holds it wrong, so like it's kind of. Oh, wrong, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, you can also put sword MTXs on the staffs, right? I think you can. I'm pretty, use, I'm you pretty can sure use I some put, put a sword, two-handed sword on my hedges, and it was holding it on the blade. I think I was playing like this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it's completely completely ridiculous, but yeah, I I think that still works. It's called half sorting, bro. It's it's legit. Look it up. <laughs> Yeah, it's like not with your hand in the blade. Yeah, the blade is like halfway <laughs> in your hand. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it actually works. Like, it, it, like half sorting is the thing when the people like wield the sword in like like this. Um, since I made us go completely off topic, just to go back to unique items a bit. I haven't really heard anyone talk about it briefly. What do you guys think about the changes to the Ellie conversion, like pyre and stuff? Because that's like a really significant change, which I haven't seen anyone like talk about at any length. So I don't have a strong opinion on this, but from the casual podcast, I actually know that Project BT has a huge, like always hated that uh, and gave the reason that even GGG give that skills kind of like lose identity when they are too easily converted because all cold skills will always be converted to fire because of fire ignite double dipping. So I can kind of see the reasoning, but I never really felt too strongly about it. But apparently GGG did, or some people did, and they now nerfed it i think that might be the reason uh, it's like it didn't change anything because you just go cold to fire avatar fire anyway and that was kind of already better than pyre because pyre yep. stops you prolif 
The yep. only thing that really changes is the fact that now you can't do kind of like more interesting things where you used to be able to go to Pyre, so go Cold to Fire and then Fire to Chaos. Because yeah. that was already kind of nerfed by the Chaos conversion changes, right? Which I think was fair. But now you've like getting double double dip nerfing because you're like not doing full conversion with your cold as well. So you do 90% conversion cold to fire and then like 75% conversion fire to chaos. Yep. <laughs> so you just can't, it's just less interesting, I think. And pilot, yeah, I don't know, like that was a weird change. I agree with the old, the, the whole premise though, that of like the skill identity and making it a little harder to convert. Just like, because I mean, every cold skill is a fire skill, right? <laughs> yep. Did you play uh, your uh, Frostbolt as fire? Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously. <laughs> just, just making sure, you, just making sure. Because then you get fire nodes and you double dip your ignites, like, yep. <laughs> as an elementalist, like, obviously. What if, remove, what if they remove Avatar of Fire again? They, like, added it, removed it, added it, mm. removed it. <laughs> Probably. Uh, it could happen. Kind of a cool note, though. Yeah, it's a cool note. I think it's good. Just, it goes against what they're... I guess planning. I don't know. Nobody. It's really what Ziggy said. Nobody used Pyre for anything. I've never used Pyre, and I've played a lot of conversion build. It's just too punishing with Prolif. Yeah, I only used it for more interesting things like double conversions, not yeah. for. I I did a um, back in I want to say Perendus dual consuming dark Pyre ice nova poison build. That was a lot of fun, and that it didn't matter because it was like 100% converted over. Um, yep. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, now that I think about it, uh, General Sauce, is, is Volspark even playable still? With the Call of the uh, Brotherhood Call of nerf? The, you know, it's it's actually kind know. of tough, you know, it's... If you were asking me, and I'll, I was saying, like, if it got nerfed down to, like, 10% conversion, then you might be thinking about, you know, getting a fatty cold damage roll on the Dadger or getting an added cold gem, but the 40% it's nothing, it's literally nothing. <laughs> It's like it's like worse than the time when they were like insanity gloves are gonna get nerfed next patch and everyone's like fuck six percent more tax speed instead of twenty and it was like fourteen or sixteen and we we're just like wait what? <laughs> oh yeah, what? That's no but um but now it's like v Vinktar is more effective because you're doing more lightning damage, um <laughs> so it's just like it does nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, one day they will find out how to nerf Wild Spark. I mean, they tried for a few a few times, but one day they 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 will eventually find out what to do. So Is someone actually there? came up with a good uh, a good a good nerf idea. It's you can't do damage while you're moving. So if you channel your your juice, <laughs> you you have to sit still while the sparks are flying out. Oh. <laughs> People will just use flicker strike. <laughs> yeah, flicker strike counts as standing still. That would work. Yep. Flicker Strike counts as standing skill, so you oh. probably could find a way. Lightning Warp as well. <laughs> yeah. Lightning Warp as well, right? Um, yeah. What thing, like, considering that we're expecting major double dipping nerfs, do these early conversion changes now even make sense? Because in a world, we don't know how it's going to be changed, but like, in a world where double dipping doesn't exist, would you still want to convert your cult to fire anyway? Like, surely at that point, it's not as big of a deal? You're still getting more damage from the ignites, but the thing which worries me is if they're going to change all of these items now, and then completely destroy double dipping in the future, mm. is this really warranted? Double dipping is a big reason you go cold to fire. Yeah, um, I think we'll be seeing much more significant changes to elemental identity in the three point oh as well. But yeah, we'll but pro they, probably address they, this. Would they destroy it? So, like, if they if they go with what Ziggy said, right, which is also my prediction that they'll just add more nodes on the skill tree, because that's what they've done in the past. Like for instance, with auras and buffs, they just spread it out more. If they do that, I mean, it would probably still be very playable. I think. Yeah, yeah that's weaker, what I hope. That's going to be playable. It's going to be playable. But right now, level dipping is like literally like more than ten times better than anything else. It's like I mean, you get like it's yeah. like a thousand thousand five hundred percent more multiplier that you can get if you like actually calculate it out. Like if you're not <laughs> if you're if being being careful with this, if you do like the calculations, you can get insane amounts. Yeah. If you have to invest like fifteen twenty percent of your build's investment into that secondary effect and it's worth it, then I think that's fine. Then. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, I like like. The damage over time play styles like i love yeah. having stuff die to the dots that's i think that's just cool like caustic arrow essence drain ignite builds I, I think it's super fun to play those but so i would hate to see them nerfed out of the game but currently it's i you always feel like 
forced to include some way of double dipping like i either go fire in some shape or form add poison in some way or at least like I mean, Valspark might be like one of the best non double dipping builds on and uh, Hand of Thingy and whatever the other thing is. Ho -ho -ho hand of Thingy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hand of, of. There's also cock builds that mm -hmm. still work pretty well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah but I, uh, oh, go ahead. I, I'm just I'm just thinking about like uh, how would it interact with Energy Shield? Like when we're talking, the biggest advantage of you know all these builds right now is that there is a lot of traveling across the skill tree, but with Energy Shield. It don't matter. You equip a yeah. Tabula Rasa, you still get 10k, yes. So if you sacrifice like 25% of that, and you still have, you know, let's say 8,000 ES with no changes, worst case scenario, is that, you know, that's still quite a bit of ES. <laughs> yeah. And if you look at it from a life build perspective, that's further nerfing a life build because of just how much you have to travel. Traveling with a life build doesn't do anything. Traveling with a ES build gives you more ES. Yeah, so. changes to poison double dipping have to come paired with some life buffs, I think. Yeah, no, I like, agree. Although those it doesn't work. Life buffs? If they go for this route. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You think so? Life. Yeah, I don't think life yeah, like more I, I'm talking like passive tree focus stuff. Like mm. more mm, like the yeah. ability to get more efficient life, scaling on the right-hand side of the tree, that sort of thing. I, I don't think life, more life ES is the buff nerfs. at all. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I don't think life needs a buff. I think ES needs a nerf. I, th I think Whatever. you need to do a bit Two of. I think you need to do a little bit of. <laughs> yeah. No, of, of no, both. it's different. It, it changes everything. Uh, I, th uh, I think yeah. one needs to be brought. I think life needs to be brought up a little bit in some. This is not global. Like some people say, oh, just globally buff life. No, just addressing some certain aspects of the tree by just one or two percent would be a huge, and then bringing ES down a bit. Um, because it's one of those things of, and I will just play Devil's Advocate because I purposely like my favorite kind of build after years of playing is currently the weakest type. If you're just gonna like bring everything down, you're just gonna have periods of time where people just okay, so we're only playing life again, but we're only playing left side of tree life. Like with the current way that the game's been working, it's always been like, one thing will always be dominant. So if they just bring CI down, you're just gonna fall back into just playing the most dominant form of life. So they need to do some general rebalancing across the board of it. And if you look at the way they've added all these extra elemental nodes in the bottom right, in the case where they completely gut double dipping, if they do, that pushes a lot of builds to go elemental. So the best elemental scaling is now in their attack based builds is in the top left near Templar and the bottom right near Ranger. So any build which wants both of those has to do a lot of travel. Any build which is elemental and wants to go EO is screwed in the bottom right side of the tree because getting to EO is near impossible. So you have to play crit. So then you're stuck in the bottom right part of the tree, which has currently very low life. So at some point, there has to be some changes because with the way they've got stuff mapped out, it's like if you're an attack-based elemental build, you're either here or you're here. And that's it. So. Yeah, but you've got evasion and stuff, you know? Yeah. Evasion needs life, though. It needs life more than armor builds do. <laughs> exactly. And the way that you get life is you have to Just equip a combs. No, but this thing, like, you, you have to, currently you have to equip a combs. So if you equip a combs, you're now not doing one hand in shield. You have to be using a two hand. So it's like a bow setup or a two hand sword setup. So they either need to make more life options, which aren't belly, because belly is great, but it's not that great because it locks out other unique items. I don't know. Like they they need to do more things. And if they if they ever did the thing of oh we'll just revert legacy combs, I think that'd be like the worst thing they could do. They need more different options because I think combs is bad for life based builds in its current state. I think it's just yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think things as well. The Coast. the problem as as it stands now for uh, evasion is that as you try to make evasion viable by getting enough life, you end up stopping scaling evasion. So yeah. you just don't get evasion scaling builds. Mm -hmm. out, you know, apart from like Queen of the Forest, you just which is scaling it for damage. <laughs> um, you're uh, yeah, you, you just you can't actually make evasion builds currently in Path of Exile. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's the perfect, going mm, that's perfect form. Perfect form kind of helps with that a little bit. Yeah. There's a, there's a few forest, exceptions. hello. Kintsu Kintsugi helps. So you actually kind of feel like you're playing a version build when you use Kintsugi. Yep. <laughs> Queen of the Forest, you mean? No, yeah. Queen of the Forest has the, has the problem the that it's yeah. not a defensive chest, though. It's like offense yeah, and movement. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're scaling evasion only for offense on Queen of the Forest, really. Yeah. Yeah, and with Kintsugi, you don't scale anything, so... <laughs> it's better to use the Queen of the Forest. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. I, I, we won't. 
how, w- how would you go about like you, i know i'm like really off topic but i really wonder how people would go about like changing uh, energy shield to me like mm. nerfing nerfing int is the way to go interesting i think i would change the passive tree and yeah. like spread it thinner kind of like like life is right now because i'm one of the guys like who thinks that yes bringing yes to the power level of life is more reasonable, but you could also do it the other way around, of course. But I think like spreading it thinner so that it's not just more point efficient, whatever you do, because I feel that upside such as having five utility flasks and having well discipline, even the nerf version is still enough to make yes desirable for certain builds. And it's, it's Something just that's... so local as well. Sorry, go ahead, well, in like following on with Yoji is that, yeah, definitely. Like, I feel like you get to like 60 points in an ES build and you're like, hey, I have enough ES now. Whereas mm-hmm. you get to 110 points in a life build, especially an evasion life build. And you're like, all right, now I finally have enough life. How can I spend my remaining three passives on the rest of my builds? <laughs> um, but I think this needs to come coupled, like, so I agree with that. But I think it also will need to come coupled with some sort of leech changes too. Because that's like a big part of the reason why ES is so dominant as well. Because you just have infinity leech with it as well <laughs> what do you think about uh moving valpack back to where it originally was or like even further into the life area because valpack kind of where, is where life... was that like bottom left was that uh, yeah okay. yeah yeah and now it's by the sound yeah now it's in the S- ES- i mean you ES- say ES- that area. but like i i don't think that would change anything if like, you put it like... let's say you put it where blood magic is <laughs> they just have to buy Still? a skin of the lords with uh valpack honestly like even even back in the day, like free spools builds would travel sixteen points to pick up ball pack. Mm. So... It will it will make the passive skill trees more interesting to build at least, but it won't realistically make that much change. <laughs> well, ball pack hide blood magic. Now what you do? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, that's that's interesting. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. I think it could be really healthy for the game if ball pack was probably just removed and then reflect and things like that were changed, like. That's like that's. I, I feel like I get kind of shot for saying like re- suggesting really big things like that that re- kind of completely change builds, but that kind of allows them to move a little bit more away from some of the uh, more one shot stuff that is there, so that CI builds can still die. They're, well. they're warming up to that now. They're warming up to that with like uh, the reflect ring buff, with uh, adding the reflect nodes on the skill tree. Maybe yeah, maybe warming up to that. Maybe. I, don't... I feel like Valpak could just be put down. <laughs> I completely I, changed. No. Else. I wouldn't be against like, them removing no. it, but I still I think it's one of those things of when people talk about CI, they say, "Oh, just kill Leech," but like there are plenty of life builds which are reliant on Leech to work. So if you just remove Super Leech from the game, then you dick over like the good life builds that currently exist. Because if yeah, you think about what, what is it that they're struggling with, what's the problem? For me, when I played a Slayer, stacking heaps of leech stuff, I still died to Reflect, so I had to go Vile Pact. So that was the problem. So addressing Reflect, then the leech actually becomes really good as a sustain skill. Like I was super happy with my Slayer as a sustain build because yep. I'm like, fuck yeah, this perma leech is amazing. The problem is, I still one shot myself to Reflect, even with like yeah. fucking Voltax Grift <laughs> after the nerf. I I'm like. I... I think if they that want was the to only remove problem, it, really. I think if they want to remove Valpak, they need to seriously, seriously rework both armor and evasion, because it's such a big defensive part of so many life builds. Because currently, the way that you build life is don't get one shot, and then if as long as you're not being one shot, you either do the leech back to full or have good forms of mitigation. Currently, armor's kind of whatever, so you either just go like full armor, or you just have some and it helps against some mobs. Um, and then evasion, we've already spoken about evasion all together, right? So if you just remove Volpact, I think that would probably do more to just keep pushing CI builds because CI builds then just go back to we have the best uh, effective HP people and we still have the most dominant um, form of defense because we just have three times more effective life than anyone else. So you can't just remove Volpact. Like, you need to change the way that Leech works and then also change the way that the core defensive yeah, work. Uh, of- of course, like you can't make any of these sorts of changes in isolation. They have yeah. to have follow-on things. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Contemplation. Contemplate most most family yeah, podcast ever. You vote. <laughs> you vote. No, here's here's one thing I noticed. Okay, so like, I don't I don't level that much, and so I remember taking my Inquisitor Flame Blast Totemer before he transferred to Vol Spark. I was like, oh shit, I gotta respect some points. Respect all the life pathing, like written in blood, blood siphon, um, discipline training, like all that stuff, right? Heart and soul. And then like afterwards, I had like twenty something free points 
And I was like, what? I just get like these points for free. Whereas life, you know, you're, you're so limited in taking those points. And then when you get those free points, it's, it's so easy to use those points to get your character to a level where you can one shot everything. So it's like, if you're just one shotting all the, all the mobs besides the boss, like you don't need that much. You just need the ES to survive the one volatile or, you know, an unlucky underwater reflect pack that you can't see. And so that's the, that's the big issue. Like life, you're just so starved on points. So it's hard to get to a level where, um, white mobs, yellow mobs, blue mobs aren't an issue for you anymore. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of like, like a power creep issue, if you will, then as well, because you don't need to invest. Like You have more that you can invest than you actually need to, to do the content. So you can sacrifice stuff like defenses or whatever. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. Yeah, I think, feel like they would have to change a lot of different things because... Like the decision if if you go yes or life that depends on so many different things and the state of like leech of armor evasion, dodge block how that works the new map mods with which nerf basically nerfed the evasion and armor builds yeah stuff like that which I never really understood why that needed to be added and block as well not like block is popular I mean now we get legacy roomies but normally it's not popular that's it's a bit weird. I just realized the underwater reflect is actually intentional then, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, if you, you found like uh, muddies and strands and uh, stuff like that, like this is a sea witch pops up and you can't see the reflect or like a yeah, breach yeah. opens up you can't see it. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I forgot I about sneaky. that completely. I mean, Volpac's pretty OP. I forgot about reflect completely, but yeah. like when you think about it, I always thought that that was that was not intentional because like when when zombies came out of the ground they wouldn't be showing the aura in the past, and now mm. maybe maybe you're not supposed to see underwater. Hmm. Hmm. Do you remember playing increased map sized island maps and it would just extend out into the water and everything's auras would be hidden? Yeah. <laughs> that's and like you have to, right also now. you have to find like all the dug in crabs at at some point because you like, yeah. will always be more than twenty mobs remaining. But like there's nothing here. <laughs> I always remember uh, Noogie's Mjolnir character or whatever. And he like ran into his first map trop island or something and there was a golem <laughs> on the ground. Just ran up to it and the golem was standing up not showing the aura. He just slammed it once, <laughs> instantly died. It's like, oh, okay, that's great. <laughs> that and back then Mjolnirs were like 60 exalts or something insane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was a good time. Classic times. <laughs> <laughs> Very on topic, very on topic. Um, I would just like to point out that we've made it through us. like two of our ten yeah. topics. Yeah. And no, 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 no. To be dark fair, control. to be fair, to be fair, we've, we've done pretty around. well. We've gone through most of them, not in order, but we've gone through them. Um, That's good, though. It's been uh, good. Yeah. Okay, so then to get back on topic, um, briefly, the League Stones. So what has been everyone's, like, strat? I know that one of us plays solo Southbound, I've heard. Um, is there like a particular strategy for running the League Stones most efficiently? Are you guys selling them or what's like your approach with them? I use the ones I find, all of them. I don't find mm -hmm. that many. <laughs> End of story. I feel like we're kind of limited in strategy because not enough blues are dropping that you can actually have much strategy. Basically what I do is if I get a good blue, that's a potential combo piece. I save it until I get some other combo pieces to combo with it. So if you get like Nemesis drop rare rings, then you save it until you get a good breach and a good beyond, basically. And then you combo those three together. That's basically my strategy is try and wait for the combo pieces to come together. And in the meantime, run a billion white ones, which is a little disappointing. Yeah. Same. I mean, like, I, I think the now with talismans back in and the league zones back in, the inventory management is a is goddamn nightmare after running maps for a while. Like, you're just like, what? Like, where do I put this stuff? And even if you have like dump tabs and stuff like that, you know, just having to search and then like set like. So what I'm doing is, I just don't really care anymore. I just set. Uh, sets of three league stones they I try to have a breach in each one and if I can I try to have like a maybe a beyond in there Because um, that combo is pretty fun even though it's pretty laggy and then the other one I'll just throw in if I have domination and after that I'll just put three together and go because it's impossible at this point to run out of um, Dunes and strands really so like it's just why not just run all of them you know, as they come up a lot of people are saying to make them non-corrupted, but with the current pool of mods on them, they can't do that. Yeah, it'd be, too, <laughs> it'd be way too overpowered. It would be so, so ridiculous. Maybe like a vendor recipe that is expensive to turn some into blue would be okay. Yeah. But 
Or like maybe not, they could have like a, a prophecy system of like the next league sign will drop will have X mod. That could be kind of cool. That could solve quite a lot. So like if that would be if if it made it into the core game. But if you imagine there was like a prophecy like the next Perendus will have a forced Kadiro in it. That's pretty huge because you yep. then suddenly get five forced Kadiro showing up. Maybe there could be so, something like a gated vendor recipe behind a prophecy. Kind of like the five to one unique thing. I think yeah, they that could, could do something like this yeah. where you can like three to one to blue or whatever. With a, but only with a prophecy, so you can't just do it all the time and make all your stones blue. Yeah, just to like further iterate on this point, so there's like 10 mods, I think, in each. Mm-hmm. So about that, there's like 10 mods for each league sign. There's not that many. It's like not, not a very long list. And one of the breach ones is five charges, you will find a Chayula one, and you can oh, potentially yeah. couple it with... Um, so it's like guaranteed Chayula five times. And you can couple that with something like rare mobs drop three extra splinters. <laughs> yeah. yep. People would just alt spam until they got that, and it would take like 20 alts. They would have to add like a bunch of filler stats, and I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. That just start uh, like you'd they'd have to add a bunch of equivalents of thorns, and at that yep. point, you wouldn't really be caring that you're getting magic ones anymore because they wouldn't be as interesting as they are now. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's definitely yeah. not the answer. They have, they have to keep them as is. Although, my biggest issue with this system, and I know it's partially just because I'm retarded. But there's no visual cue for when you run out of them. So if oh, you're if that. you're in the oh, zone, like it's one of those things of like you've run your keys, you do a couple of maps, you go, hang on, I haven't noticed any like uh, horrendous recently, and you check, yep, they've all worn out. You go, yeah. oh, I'm stupid. You put throw some new in, and then you go back into zone, and then an hour go by, and you go, hang on, I haven't noticed any beyond. My- oh fuck, hang on. And I'm constantly just <laughs> in this thing of like oh, I forgot to put new things in. So now to stop myself from doing that, like. On my inventory, I have, um, like, rows. So my favorite are Perendus, Onslaught. I just like Onslaught for some reason. And then I'll go for, like, Budlines or Nemesis or something. I- I've been purposely avoiding Breach and Beyond because at the moment my character's kind of weak defensively, so I'm saving them up. Um, okay. And then it's like, when I'm happy that I'm not going to fall over reading chat, then I'll, like, run all the crazy Breach Beyond ones at once. So now, to make sure I don't forget to run them, a third of my inventory is just gone. And that feels horrible. I, I wish that we either had visual cues for when they wore out, or we could queue them up somehow. Or as like Nuggie said, like if we can have a separate bag for them or something. I think they're a really good system to be added into the core game. But for the love of God, they need better inventory management. It would, it would, like I know they wanted to make this like fancy menu with menu art and everything, but it would be so much better if it was just in your inventory, like three little boxes there. Yep. Like, yeah. that yeah. Would, like just below that would solve the this problem. And yeah. That would be so nice. I mean, especially because, so I, I put up this little joke video where I was like trying to open some menus and I like had a bit of a brain freak out <laughs> and I ended up pressing like a billion buttons and kind of just like melting. But um, like that was a joke video, but kind of not really because we have like so many different menus now and, the, and then now like Prophecy and Leagues are on, on the same menu under the H key yeah. along with your challenges and everything. Mm-hmm. And it's just getting a little bit kind of bloated. No. So having like just more stuff like having some little boxes in your inventory screen so that that's on there and accessible and easy and something you're always saying would be so much better yeah. no, i agree with you i agree yeah, i feel like that having the whole screen for like just like three things it, it, like the screen does doesn't feel like it's actually needed because it's just when you press h and you get the, the screen it's just like there's not much information on there. There's like mainly just like this fancy big panel with like three small boxes it's on it massive screen for three yeah. little squares yeah, yeah. I, whenever i look at this I, I look at it i'm like this information could have been conveyed with less screen space. <laughs> yeah, but I, GGG has a tendency to do stuff like like they have a problem with committing to like tiny things that possibly could be removed with this. I don't know. It would be such a small thing if they were to add like an additional window for this, but it's a commitment, right? That's like an additional window they're adding into the game and then people are like, is this going into the core game? So they'd rather just not do it, but it makes the item management so freaking yeah. hard. <laughs> I don't maybe know. just make it's, the it's not even the leak stones to me it's not even the leak stones it's like the essences the splinters all the other bullshit that just drops you just have a ton of like these tiny items everywhere constantly mm. you know a six socket weapon well, that's easy to deal with but like these tiny little shits all the time i don't know, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, it does late so I, I fucking i fucking love this legacy league and i think leak stones are fantastic they just need a bit more work but it really does highlight that just kind of how tedious inventory management is starting to become with all this stuff coupled in. Yeah. It's if also, they're going to make League Stones a permanent thing, it's definitely going to need some love. Yeah. Also, so... I'm missing one slot in my currency stash tab. Like, I, I got any Parandus coins, 
and five splinters. But I only have five slots, so five yeah. splinters. <laughs> they, they, they need to fix the tab thing. I also think, just briefly, that from a new player perspective, it's even worse. Because I, I'm already in, I'm, I'm in the situation where I'm trying to convince people that the chaos recipe may be not worth your time. Like, that's an argument, but anyway. But now, if you're in a situation, if you're new to the game and you're not using a loot filter or using the default loot filter, you already have... Oh, you have four tabs. Yeah, you have four tabs. You already have all this extra <laughs> clutter. Then it's you have all this extra clutter. Half your inventory is full of rubbish. You don't have a good loot filter, so too much stuff is dropping. And you're trying to do the chaos recipe because you saw a video once and someone said the chaos God. recipe was good. And it's like, cool. And people say, oh, how do I trade? I'm like, right, go watch this video to learn how acquisition works. And all of these stupid things that they just keep on adding, keep on adding. <laughs> I I really want Legacy to go into the core game, but at the same time, it's just like, I don't know, man. Like those four slash tabs feels bad, man. Yeah. I just I just want you guys to envision for a second this one stash tab that's got that's full of essences and splinters and like some random maps and random currency items and league stones just like all these little single space items just all mixed in there no organization <sighs> and it's, the dude says in chat now imagine using that with a xbox analog stick <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh, went too far. i wonder like would that be that would i mean we're laughing about this but that's that's a big deal right like isn't yep. that kind of a, i mean they, they a league mods. killer maybe we, will, maybe we will not never see the old leagues again they i mean the the good... mods. they well, don't implement legacy goodbye the yeah. good thing about it though because if you look at an xbox controller is when you get so frustrated they have a long enough cord that you can then proceed to hang yourself with it because mouses, the cord isn't that long, right? So with this, you have a much easier setup. You have a route out. Um, it's getting dark. So, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you have an option. You have How an option you at least. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here on Baycast. Uh, Console plubs hang yourselves. <laughs> kept it real for so long, dude. <laughs> Fuck. Jesus. Uh, I don't think dark, this will man. work. I'm not sure if this will work. I'm trying. Uh. <laughs> oh my god, Yoji. <laughs> Everyone just get out your controllers. <laughs> Back on topic. <laughs> right, so yeah. Um, okay, Moving so... Along. <laughs> I think we have one topic left, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so now the main thing is just, like, beta. So, I know personally I was really worried about the beta going into this league because assuming I get beta access, I kind of have to play it. I'm a content creator, I make regular content. If I choose not to play it, I screw myself over. So I have to play better, and I want to play better, I'm excited to. So, for me personally, going to this league, I've like tried to front load all of my builds, especially the ones which I think might be changed. So like, what do you guys think? Do you think beta's gonna mess with this league's like long-term longevity? Is it changing the way you're playing? Go for it. For sure. Um, I think like, for me, I've always said, it's probably gonna be like a month and a half, two month league, depending on when the uh, the beta comes out and because yeah you want to see the new stuff for us we play so many hours per day right so we've seen it all and yeah there's like new skills and stuff but the core game is still um you know it's still the same content and so like when beta comes out i'm gonna want to see like whatever acts they make available they probably won't make all 10 right because like they won't give you like the last boss and stuff um but you're gonna want to stream that and uh, as a recent professional poe player um you know obviously uh I think if you're financially invested in the game as well, you're gonna want to stream the the beta because like that's what people want to see as well. They want to get that uh, that head start. Because imagine like if you got um, Atlas beta, like the complete thing, you could figure out the Atlas strategy that you were gonna do before anyone else, and that's um, that's part of it too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I know that's... that I'm not going to play the beta at all. Yeah. Just like last beta, I skipped it, Something. and I'm not going to do it again. That's brave, man. That's fucking brave. That's uh, brave. I, I, I agree. I did that last time as well. Uh, I didn't regret I, it at all. I will not back you up on that. I'm definitely going to play the beta. <laughs> I, I'd be yeah. very surprised. But, but then again, I got a job that brave, it doesn't man. require me to play Path of Exile, which helps. That's, that's okay, true. okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, other, other way around now. Like, uh, Yoji, Yoji's in a little bit of a different situation than the rest of yeah. us. Now, yeah. would you play beta... If there was an NDA and you couldn't stream it or make content for it, 
But no, everybody else guess. would be playing, obviously. I, because I, I, you'd still be reason... making content in advance yeah. for the release. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, oh, that would shit. probably be kind of a good thing. As mm-hmm. like that would it, like it'd be a fucking amazing thing as a content creator actually if everyone releases their content at the same time yeah. and you have time to prepare ahead of time that's like the content creator dream man yeah. that is Less that so is by far the preferred that is a YouTuber yeah that's as a YouTuber that's is good. insane yeah Ugh. that's like, so good especially in a situation where in, in a situation where like only certain people get betas it can really screw you over like I've been screwed over in the past when I used to make content for this small indie game called World of Warcraft and um, I didn't get the beta access for Legion. And it was one of the things is, as a YouTuber, if you don't have access to the latest stuff and all the other big guys do, you're already on the back foot because you're a smaller channel. So when you're a smaller channel plus that, then it's screwed. So if they did do like NDA um, and they gave it to everyone, then even in the case of like, oh, we're going to give it to Ziggy first because it's Ziggy. But then like two or three weeks later, then all the small plebs like me got it. We're still on a level even, like we're still on like an even field because we can then release our content at the same time. Um, yeah, they like an NDA is just completely unrealistic. Yeah. Like they can't enforce that and also have a buy-in and also yeah. have it be like fair. Like it's yeah. just that's not going to happen well, for this. There is listen. There's I think there's a difference though when you think about it because the biggest complaint about the previous beta or whatever was that people GGG is all about hype. They want that hype trade going, and people were like, "Listen, this fucking killed my hype. I don't even yeah. want to play the league anymore." That was a huge complaint, and that's probably one of Yoji's points why he, you know, mm-hmm. he's probably skipping it. Yeah. Now, if they were to do something like this, there's a huge difference between, you know, people watching a 10-hour stream of somebody doing something, and then people like fucking, you know, downloading off of Pirate Bay. A ten-minute clip of somebody going through Act Six or something like. That's I feel true, like man. that wouldn't necessarily kill the hype for people as much. So, yeah, I, I, agree. I I honestly wouldn't be as like that surprised if they would put an NDA. Sure, it would be very hard to enforce something like that, but uh, it would save a lot of people who don't don't know any better for themselves. I don't know. You think you do, but then you don't, right? Type of thing. You think you want to use the real money auction house to buy items, but once you've done it, you kind of regret it and you never play the game yeah. again. This would be like the same thing. Yeah. That's why I'm not long... playing the beta, because I'm afraid yeah. that I will not enjoy it. I, I haven't tried it. I normally kind of try to not play unfinished games, but that's usually not that difficult. You just don't to buy early access or like betas as much. This I mean, will, I, this will... I try them sometimes, but... I do you I know? I guess. Do. do you know this, Yoji? Like, because this might change your mind. This will be a little different because um, I think like two of the acts aren't going to be in the beta. Yeah, Ooh. no, that doesn't change anything. Like last time, Malachi was also okay. not not in for a while, yeah. and I, if if anything, that kind of makes it worse because it's more unfinished. I kind of want to play the finished thing when it's like the whole thing is complete, and I want to play yeah, through okay. it as one experience and experience yeah, it as it's that's intended. True. That's kind of mm. what I want to do. Is that a case of you think that, or is that a case of you've been suggested that quite heavily? Um, I think I think oh, that's what not you, not you, Ziggy. I don't know about the last two acts thing. Does that, have, oh, that has been um, mentioned somewhere. It has been mentioned. Yeah, I, like I don't know if it's public information. So <laughs> I, 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 like, I, 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 it has been mentioned somewhere by someone. Okay, somewhere. cool. Okay. But yeah, I, yeah, I yeah that's yeah, that's been mentioned. All right. I, mean, I, I wonder. <laughs> Yeah. But, like, now Ziggy's like saying that, it makes me think, like, is it really that big of a deal? Like, would it really be such a hype breaker? Like, it's, it's, leveling's cool, right? Yeah. But it's not that big of a deal. That's Everybody's just deal. wanting to get maps because... anyway. This is and like I'm, I'm the leveling guy, right? So... No, no you're, yeah. you're not the leveling guy. You probably uh, spend less time, you level more often, but you spend less time leveling than I do because I take five 500 hours to get there. Yeah. Yeah, me no, and Yoji, we're the I real leveling I enjoy leveling. I enjoy leveling. And it's oh. not that big of a deal for me that, you know, all this stuff is all this stuff is happening. So would it really be like a game breaker? Would people be like, oh, my hype is dead for this now, so I'm not going to map? I don't know, yeah, right? Th- it's going to be mapping. I think it's going to it's gonna hurt it because this is all like story-based kind of like juicy new experience content right like new new acts it's six new acts so that's basically the entire thing is all like just the new content like that so having the you for people's first experiences be of unfinished versions of that in a beta is definitely gonna hurt it but what, what else can they do man they need to beta test this shit because they're also making a bunch of systematic changes as well yeah, yeah. no there, yeah, they, there has to be a proper team like i don't want this to be a case of 
All right, we kept everyone secret, but we had the catering department working on balance for the last three weeks, and we're really happy with this thing called the Ascendant. They're like, we guys, you nailed it this time. I really hope that they give it to at least, even if people can't stream it, they at least give it to people who know what they're doing to really, like, test it, because the last thing we want is a case of, brilliant, we got to save our hype, but now another six months of, you know, wonk. We want stuff to feel polished. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just hoping. That I mean, they it don't... feels pretty good already. When I was playing uh, Act Ten on the on the Alpha, it actually felt pretty good. <laughs> so, I think they could release a right rise now. band. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that they they manage to make it at least better than the 2.0 beta because I think that was the time where I was least interested in PoE overall, like since forever, basically. I think since ever since I started playing the game, the time like the last part of the 2.0 beta, everyone was just like waiting for the for it the, the actual thing to come out and when it came out they realized okay we already kind of know what it is we already explored the meta and then everyone was just hoping for the next patch to change things and that was just like such a dry dry period of oh please change something it can't, it can't in some ways the beta though. what's that uh, because the beta oh go ahead you you think the beta can't be too long well how long do you yeah, how long because, do you think the beta should be because like people were expecting beta or not i'm sorry not beta maybe like 3.0 come out at the time of this league right people were like oh it it goes expansion then challenge league then expansion and so let's say they they bring it out what one and a half months into this league two months people are only waiting a few weeks for it i mean it's not too bad right I, I, I think they systems. need to have another league after this one to stay on because they got. They, I don't think they're going to break their release schedule. Um, so I think we're most likely going to have, unless they're going to do a really quick beta. But I'd be very surprised. I imagine what will happen is we'll like we'll get early testing happening in the, like the last month and a half of this league. We'll then get another league, and then we'll get three point I would be mm -hmm. amazed if we got three point coming out right after this. I'd love to get 3.0 after this. Yeah, I, I would like, love it, but like that's realistic, what they're trying to push for, I mean, right? I say realistically, we all thought that you know they were releasing Act Five and they gave us Act Ten, so that we yeah. could have VR support with you know role play devourers in a week's time. So <laughs> I think the last date we got was like June, July, right? That was like yeah. kind of what they were yeah. looking at for releasing. So that would be normally June is a release date, and then we have June, July, August, and then September is a release date, and then December is another release date, right? Because if you actually have to plan your holidays around this, you, you know. And then, yeah, that's basically how this works. So, yeah, they kind of would have to, if they release in July, and they keep the three months, they would have to change their release schedule. Yeah. Which would be kind of interesting. So either they change Which the schedule... Which would be a maybe... nice opportunity for... A yes. race or something, you know? Yeah, like like a one month something thingy. Yeah, Dark like Shrine. a little Dark bit, Dark little bit of a something. I don't think anyone would be sad about Dark Shrines. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, Dark Shrines. Yeah. I would love a race weekend when I'm not traveling. But both last race weekends I've been away for. Yeah, I think that I, I haven't long. raced in like six months, man. It's killing me. I haven't raced I got in like one three race. And a half years. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more <laughs> of a choice. Yeah. yeah I I've never raced. Of... Whenever there are races, I'm just like playing proper PUE. I don't know. It's just the, the schedule never fits. There's always a leak happening while there are races. Uh, I might as well not race. I didn't yeah. win any MTXs anyway. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> I have a 0.27% chance of not winning anything. Jeez. I never, won any, I never won any of the random MTXs. I think I have like two or three race reward tabs, which is like a sapphire ring with alternate art and stuff like that. <laughs> I always got like the five points. <laughs> nice. Um, but just for the sake of Yoji's sleep schedule, um, are there any other like closing thoughts and topics that people <laughs> want to have? Because I can tell that Yoji's just gonna like straight up pass out if we keep this going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we could ramble for like another four hours, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I guess we're gonna always yeah. save it for like next week or something. <laughs> yeah. Good. All right. It was fun. Well, in that case, uh, thanks everyone for watching. We'll be back again in the next week or two once we've worked out a new schedule and hopefully for that one we can set up the stream off stream so we don't have a repeat <laughs> of the pre-show uh this will all be uploaded onto my youtube in the next couple of hours so if you miss part of the show don't worry it'll be there and if you have any other questions or stuff you want to talk about in the future then do field it to us but yeah uh, are any of you guys going to start streaming next if so i could throw a host or something or are we all no. piecing out i'm gonna go get dinner 
I had like four hours of sleep, so I'm probably going for another nap or something. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm going to get my four hours of sleep. Okay. <laughs> Raise, turn it on. Uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm out. Cute chicken. Uh, How's the random you? community person? Oh. Yeah, okay. Right. I'm gonna swap nice. this. I'm gonna swap the scene now, so Yoji can peace out, and I'm not gonna ruin anyone's Skype. So, bye bye, people. And uh, we'll throw a host to someone on like two viewers. Feels good, man. So. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Hi guys. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Fun. Watching. Fun. I play solo southbound. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>